What the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. And hello, Internet. Welcome back to the Harsh Language Podcast. What up, fellas? What What's up? Going on? We have a special guest today, ladies and gentlemen. My good yeah, friend, Nick. There yeah. he is. Well, he's blacked out for now. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> there hello, hello. he is. There What's he up, is. guys? Thank welcome, you for having welcome. me. What's yes, up? sir. Yeah. So thank you for having me. Yeah, Nick is my personal friend. Also personal friend of our previous guest, Owen, Machine Gunner yes. USMC. And I have to make an amendment real quick before we start, because when, when we had Owen on, I said that Owen was sort of responsible for the podcast happening, being that we all kind of met through Owen. But really, Nick is the architect, because I would have never met Owen if not for Nick. That's right. Wow. Yeah, I grew Deeper. up with Owen. Dan yeah. came along That's later. the horse. That's the lore. That is the harsh language lore, Delving folks. into the roots of it. Yeah. yeah. We're getting deep. Oh, yeah. Also, Nick is my boy, because fuck Captain America. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I was just, just going to say that, man. Yeah. <laughs> Captain oh, America is, kidding. he is just boring. Just a little, yep. That's a bum. Yeah. There was a bit of a controversy in the comments of our YouTube channel between him. Shout out to Ed. Yeah, Ed's not. Ed, there's Marvin. A, there's a beef there. Yeah, Marvin, you're on Ed's shit list. I don't want to say anything, I, but it's. Hey. Whew. That's yep. fine. I got Nick on my side. We're we're good yeah, to go. Just Captain That's America true. does That's absolutely true. nothing with his little shield, and it's it's just no. Me and Nick versus the world. Take on anybody. Nah, me I'm Dusty, me Dusty and Ed. We're, we know what's we know what's what's what. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Nick and Owen grew up across the street from one another, and then Nick and I fell in love in junior high, <laughs> and then I was introduced to Owen through Nick. Nice. Yes, the garage days. Yeah, well, Nick and I bonded in what was it like seventh grade over yes over the our our mutual love of Bon of <laughs> Bon Jovi. Yes, we went to lunch <laughs> and I was listening to my CD player and he asked what Ooh. I was listening to. And was, it happened to be Bon Jovi. It's my life. Nice. Oh yeah. Yes, Marvin, you a big Bon Jovi fan? CD player. Yeah. <laughs> mm, can't name a song on top of my head. Oh, oh god. You know it's my uh, not. You know it's my life. It's now it's living on a prayer, man. You must have heard. Living on a prayer. Living on a prayer, yeah. Okay. I've definitely heard living on a prayer. Okay. Whew, I was getting fucking worried. We're gonna have to second. make Marvin listen next. <laughs> yeah, that's the is next, that a thing? That's the next podcast. Once this one blows up, <laughs> that's, <just not. laughs> that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna Could branch be out. Could be. There's a guy on TikTok that I watch. He's like, not to be racist, he's just like he's a black guy, but he's like he he just Yeah, I know who you're talking about, and I don't believe that he's really listening to those songs for the very first time. He just listens to songs that he's never listened yeah. to before, but it's like, it's yeah. There's lots of videos to do that. And uh, how, how reaction, could he not have heard reaction any to yeah. <laughs> he just there's a lot of react video guys out there. He just jams out and he's like, okay, all right, okay. But the last one I saw, he was listening to like Radiohead, and it was just, I don't even like Radiohead. I'm just like, there's no way this guy likes Radiohead. There's no, <laughs> there's no shot. But uh, yeah, make Marvin listen. I think that's that's a, it's happening. It's happening. Um, Stay tuned. Nick, do you even remember how we became friends? Because I don't. How we became friends? Yeah, like, why did we just decide to go to lunch together? We were perfect strangers. Like, how did that happen? Because we were, like, you know, the class clowns, if you will. Yeah, but we <laughs> we, we must have been in a class together and had the same lunch period, and we must have just been like, yeah, yeah we, we were going to get lunch. Uh, we were in study hall, and we talked about playing pool. Oh, really? Yes. I don't remember that at all. Playing pool and Damn. playing WWF No Mercy. Mm. That was the big oh, topic. Man. Yeah, we hung and out then one. You came night. over and we played No Mercy, and That's I destroyed true. you. That's right. Yeah, with your fucking. I believe that because Dan sucks at all Nintendo sixty four games. Yeah, he does. Well, there's a rumor that he's on a suit game in like space. three months. This podcast is over. First of all, Nick, you've never. I fucked you up in Smash. You, you and your fucking Donkey absolutely Kong. Absolutely did not. Oh, uh, Marvin, <laughs> Nick is a Donkey oh, Kong run right trick. Okay. And I you know, know what that. you know what Nick used to do? Nick used to hang out on the side of the fucking map and just toss objects at people and then try to <laughs> sneak in with the Donkey Kong spin it's called, move. It's called strategy. And it I used to well. and I used to play as Kirby and I used to fuck everybody up because Kirby's unstoppable. Except Chris, our friend Chris. <laughs> I told you about Chris. Chris didn't blink. Yeah. Uh, he was Fox and he just went crazy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Best Fox yeah. I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. <laughs> You're a fan of Mango Marvin? <laughs> I, Chris would give him a run for his money. Hey, I'd love to see it. 
Yeah, he uh, he dropped off the face of the planet though. Rip, rip, Chris. Oh, rip. Chris. Yeah, that's another story. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So uh, we decided to have Nick on because the movie we were talking about a little bit later in the show is The Menu, and Nick is a chef. Mm-hmm. Former chef. Former professional chef, current still chef. I mean, you're still a chef. It's like once a chef, always a chef, right? I suppose so, yes. Why don't you talk <laughs> a little bit about your career path? And My what, career path? Yeah, and what you do now. Well, right now I'm a stay-at-home stay at home dad. Yep, yep. Making them chicken nuggets for the kids. That's what I'm a chef now of. <laughs> them fucking, uh, what is it, fucking <laughs> steroid-free, fucking glute. Gluten free, all that Antibiotic bullshit. Antibiotic free, oh yeah. Nick's a big, sure. big health health nut. Okay, not a big health nut. No, he's not. He just makes sure he's not putting all that fake bullshit in his kids' food. Yes, you got I a just... YouTube channel though. You're not just just sitting mm-hmm. there being. Yes, a I did. I started the YouTube channel and uh, Rose Pig Cooking, right? Rose Pig Cooking. Yes. Yeah. Go check Great that out, folks. Channel, We're gonna yeah. leave. We'll leave that in the description. We'll link it yes. later. But so, so how did you go from being a uh, professional chef to a YouTube guy? Well, I just went to culinary school and then started working in kitchens. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, that's it. You start working, and then you start learning. You start gaining friends, and then move from restaurant to restaurant. And then COVID hit. Yeah. And that was into that. Nick yeah. worked. Nick worked at a few big restaurants, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. Well, so. I mean, one was owned by Robert De Niro. Yes. Ooh. Well, the hotel he owns the uh, Greenwich Hotel. Oh, it was in a hotel. Tri- I didn't. I didn't know. Yeah, that. Yeah, it was in a hotel. Yeah, that was a great restaurant. I had a lot of fun there. Nick served a lot of famous people in his day. I did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did. I have the uh, the list of who's uh, not nice and who is uh, nice. Give us one. <laughs> hit, hit us with the not nice person. Not nice person. Yeah, they'll never see it. Don't worry. Who's the chick from uh, Twilight? I forgot her name. Oh, uh, Kristen Stewart. Yeah, she looks yeah. like a bitch. She looks yeah, like she. Yeah, uh, <laughs> she came in for a brunch one day. We had this uh, porchetta sandwich, and she requested to cut it in five. Uh <laughs> And I began to cut it in five, and obviously you're left with six pieces. And I just looked at the chef. The chef looked at me, and. I just ate that extra piece and then just put the five pieces on the plate. Did she want the crust removed? <laughs> in fives. What the yes, fuck? In fives. <laughs> so in some ways she prepared you to make your children's lunch for school now, right? Yeah, that's that's true. Do you cut your yeah, kid? Do you cut the kids' sandwiches in fours? Like my mom used to when I was a kid? Um no, so I have this little, little technique squares. where I take the slice of bread and put whatever's going in there and then you fold it over. It makes like this little nice pocket. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's my strategy with the sandwiches, like, like a sandwich like a taco, like a sandwich empanada. Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. That's Everything that's dad nice tech. You wouldn't know about that then. That is that is dad tech. Yeah, you wouldn't know about that. Yeah. Yep. Um, I just want to say that Nick is just stunting on all of us with his background. With oh, the, the pool table. Pool table. The yeah. pool table. I'm sitting here with the cat tree. Dan's in like a yeah. sex dungeon. And <laughs> yeah. That's the pool table. That's another spot where Dan has gotten. Yeah, uh, messed up quite a quite a bit. This is ooh, quite a bit. <laughs> He's so full of shit. It's unbelievable. No, uh, I first of all, him. and this is not much of a sex dungeon, Marvin. I don't know how many ladies would want to make love with Michael Myers looming over them. <laughs> That's true. So I don't know. I might have to put that away for when the sex <laughs> takes place, if it ever takes place. But uh, back yeah. to the career path, real quick. I yeah, have yeah. to mention that Dan and I worked at a very special restaurant together we did we did where i just Man, you worked at a restaurant what oh yeah hell? that's where that's where everything propelled for me i mean absolutely oh, my restaurant the famous mama Gina's. yeah so uh, when oh, we yeah. got out of high school well you wait you were you working there in high school i don't remember no no you were at the bagel place in high school the bagel place was my very very yeah. first taste of uh culinary experience so our mutual friend mike was working as a delivery driver at this pizzeria in town called Mama Gina's, and then Nick worked, like, literally everyone we knew worked there. All our friends worked there. Yeah, I was so, there. So, one, I, I ended up deciding to get a job there, and it, it was, it's still to this day, honestly, the most fun job I've ever had, because mm. it was just, like, all of our friends. And then on, like, Friday night, because, you know, during the week, it's not, not as busy, so it was, like, it would be two, and th- two would open, two drivers, and then two would close, and you would never really ever... Nick and I basically never really worked together 
Um, right. But then like Fridays and Saturdays, which were the busy days, all the drivers would come in. And mm. honestly, for their food being pretty shitty, like their pizza specifically, they were fucking busy on the weekends. Yeah. Like real busy. And we made pretty good yeah. money too, but it was so much fun because we'd just be fucking around <laughs> in the, like in the kitchen and stuff waiting for deliveries. And then we'd go out on deliveries and we'd meet up at like Taco Bell and like random shit. Um, yeah. I'd meet up with Tommy and play baseball. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> They have a uh, draft beer at the no, pizzeria. No, it wasn't a restaurant. Abs- we we're joking absolutely. around. It was. It was like yeah, a. Yeah, a yeah, all right. It was a pizzeria with like three tables. You ever worked <laughs> at a pizza place, Marvin? Pizza? No, I worked at a McDonald's. Did you really? I worked at a uh, family-owned like cafe grill type of thing, and that was that was cool. But nah, never a pizzeria. Did you get free? I started at McDonald's. That was my first that... job. Did you get free food? No, McDonald's is a piece of shit company. So. <laughs> The more waste you have, it's like there's an incentive to have less waste, and that's when you get free food. Otherwise, mm. you got to pay for your own. You got to you gotta get to know the other restaurant. You, food trading, like, that's what we did. Like, you'd call the nearest, like, restaurant. Like, you, you work at a pizza place, you call Carl's Jr. or Taco Because it's a small town, you know all the people. You're like, hey, yeah. we've got a pizza here. Are you going to make us some tacos? We'll trade. Usually oh, managers wow. will let you do that, that kind of shit. Food trading, yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's a thing. So our boss. Yeah, it would have been nice to have. Our boss was a like straight off the boat, barely speaking comprehensible English Italian guy named Pasquale, and his brother <laughs> Joe Giuseppe. Oh, just it. And they ran, they ran the place, and they used to actually instead of trying to pay us, they used to offer us food in, a, in like, uh, like a, mm. instead of our pay at the end of the week. Oh God! He used to try to barter with us, yeah. Pasquale. That was only a few times, but most of the time he would just straight up refuse yeah. to pay you. I don't like want... if you work a lot of hours, he wouldn't believe it. What, one of, oh my God! One of Nick and I's favorite things to do, even to this day, is to like quote Pasquale in his accent, and it's hilarious. The but there was one time he was like, uh, uh, you know, you would bring him at the end of the week, like your, um, not at the end of the week, but at the well, yeah, at the end of the week, you bring him your time card or whatnot, and he would. And every, like, every fucking time, without question, he would be like, uh, I, d- I don't think you work at this many hours, brother. <laughs> like, yeah, I did, Pasquale. And he's like, I, I, I'm not going to pay you. He's like, well, why not? He's like, I don't want, I don't want to get paid you, is what, what he would say. <laughs> I don't want to get paid you. Um, yeah, the, ma- the magic number was 200. If, if you were over $200, he straight up refused like, yep, to pay you. It, was just, it. It, wasn't, it wasn't happening. Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. But got to say, you know. It was fun. Nick used to get abused because for no reason. Uh, we all had nicknames. Nick was Moonettes, which means garbage in Italian. <laughs> yeah, that's, I was that's fin- true. I was Finocchio, which is like an Italian. Was it a vegetable, Nick? Finocchio. It's a vegetable. Uh, and it, it is a vegetable. My grandmother used to eat it, but I know why they called me that. Basically, means the f word, which is not very nice. It's very home of, if you know what I'm getting at. Yeah. 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 Mm, they, yes. they used to call me that because I'm pretty, and. Uh, what was Tommy? Tommy was was meatball, right? But was what was that in Italian? Poupette. Poupette, right? Yeah. So uh, Owen was uh, Wally. He couldn't yeah. say the name Owen, and he just uh, named him Wally. Yeah, you guys have heard me call <laughs> Owen Wally before. Well, I'm dropping the Wally. So that's where next time I say Owen for sure. That's where that comes from. But yes. uh, yeah, no, it was a fun place to work, you know. And to be honest, we made pretty good money, like as kids just out of high school. Bought my Mustang with that pizza money. Yeah, you bought a Mustang. Like I, I saved up a bunch of money from them. Not that I save money ever, but yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Nick did you and do I this at a high school or in high school? It was like right after high, high school. Because oh, okay. in high school, I worked for my uncle at a stereo shop. I've told you guys that before. Yeah. And uh, oh yeah, yep. that was the worst experience of my life. Yeah, that was. <laughs> so then I ended up. I just ended up. I quit there for like the thousandth time, and then ended up going to Mama Gina's. Um, cold calling for insurance is a pretty miserable job. I did work for insurance, you know that, but I didn't have to cold call. They called me. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're the person they called after the cold callers got somebody to say, "Yeah, you could take my information down." Geico actually never did cold calling, believe it or not. Oh, really? Yeah, huh. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Nick and I started a bit of a poker club in his garage. We used to play. Yes. We used this to, was before, uh, yeah, this was after Mama Gina's and before culinary school. The, it was during infamous. Mama Gina's. You were still working there. I <laughs> oh, wasn't. Yeah, was. I, I was. I had gone back to my uncle, and I think I was yeah, just like went, back I and was forth. still there, yeah. Yeah, but uh, we used to hang out in Nick's house like constantly. Nick's house was like always the house where like everybody would go. 
Because and, everyone was on my block. Well, b- forget Kevin Nick, and Owen. Just like Nick was, the, Nick would always have house parties. Like pretty. Remember, you know the parties I from like, like two house parties. I didn't always have house. Yeah, parties. but they were pretty <laughs> legendary parties. <laughs> yeah, the one was legendary. Nick had parties like you would see in like a uh, like a, a early two thousands high school movie like american pie or something because i did i did it nice i had tables set up with like sliced limes for your coronas and everything like <laughs> nice. Yeah, it was nice yeah yeah but we used to hang out in this fucking is poor mother's fucking place till like three four five in the morning and one day i don't even know what happened i was like we we were just like oh we should just clean out the garage and like play poker out there so it started with us just like cleaning out all the junk out of his garage and setting up like a folding table basically to play on. And then it turned into that to like, Oh, we should actually like, like just make the garage nice. And we fucking put up like sheetrock and got like carpet. We paid for like this really fucking sick poker table. There's a TV out there, a fridge. And that was like the hangout spot. Nice. Yeah. So, yep. Lifelong friends now and lovers. Yep. (laughs) And now I go to Nick with uh, special requests. For uh, cooking, oh things. god, yes. Mm. This guy makes a mean smash burger, boy. Let me tell you. Ooh. Oh yeah. Can imagine. Oh yeah. But uh, but yeah. So, uh, what have you guys been up to this week? Anything good? Uh, I've been watching some uh, Sunny. Oh I'm yeah, that's you. right. You mentioned it earlier. So you got past yeah, the hard R. After the hard R, you know, I just took a step back. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep watching this. No, it wasn't that serious. I was like, that know, show was pretty funny, and uh, yeah, I, I started watching some more. It's, How it's far funny. are you? I'm still in the first season, like maybe episode five or six. Yeah, it it continues to be hilarious. Like honestly, yeah. I think some of the later seasons, I was telling Dusty because he's not caught up, but like, they're I think they're doing some of the best writing they've done throughout the show, and it's one of the longest running sitcoms now ever on TV. I think. It's second. I think it is the longest running. I think it's second to The Simpsons. The Simpsons counts as. Oh like, yeah, Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you discard the cartoon factor, yeah, it's the longest running. But you know, that's why I talk about their podcast all the time, and just like watching them in this type of environment where they're like not acting as their characters, it's so fucking funny because a they've been friends forever, so you just that like the vibe that they have is is fucking funny. But as yeah. they speak, sometimes they just like naturally go into like joke mode and they go on these like little like bits where they're just riffing back and forth off of one another. It's just, it's fucking hilarious. I'm glad you like yeah. it, Marvin. It's funny as fuck. Yeah, it's good. It's good. And like, it's one of those shows, I think I mentioned it before. It's like either you love Sonny or you hate Sonny. And if you hate it, I don't think you get really the humor of it. And that's not me being like a fucking like, you know, uh, elitist elitist it's just it's dan is a known elitist for the <laughs> viewers and listeners out there yeah i'm a gatekeeper if you will uh <laughs> it's just like it's like go ahead like ad lib comedy is what i look at it like like it's scripted <laughs> ad lib but it's basically like if a, a you know some friends are set around like if we were all thought we were funny and decided to like record it that's kind of what i feel like it's always sunny is yeah if dan and nick recorded it Mama Gina's, it would have been, it's always oh, sunny yeah. in Mama Gina's, not If they would have put a camera in that place, we'd be... <laughs> oh, yeah. Right we now. would be, I'd Forget be talking to you on a fucking yacht. <laughs> yeah. We have some funny videos, actually. Our friend Mike <laughs> has videos up. I don't know if I've ever showed you them, but there's videos <laughs> up on YouTube that he took you up. You gotta show them at least the voicemail. Yeah, I'll, I can show them the voicemail. The voicemail is hilarious. I should actually... Insane. Yeah. It sounds like a bit. It's not. Everybody, I don't it wasn't... We, I, yeah. We all went to Philadelphia one day for the Phillies Mets game. And the person who was covering for us just got hurt and I don't know, he needed Ooh. someone to cover and he just called all of us one after the other and we obviously just <laughs> didn't pick up or made up a story and he just flipped out. This voicemail that he left Nick is fucking so funny. Yeah. I'll I'll play it for you guys. I'll send sounds it, good. I'll send yeah. it to you guys later. It's like the perfect example of what it was like to work there. And another good example when I went for my <laughs> interview, right, I was just sitting yeah. at a table talking to oh, God. talking to Pasquale, who was like this fat, short, stubby Italian guy. He fucking <clears throat> Nick was like quietly like restocking the soda case, and next door was like this convenience store, and they always used to go by scratch offs like all day long. Yeah. And I was sitting at the table waiting for him to come in to interview me, 
and he just comes storming in, yelling at Nick, going, "Motherfucker! Yeah, oh, all, all I fucking hear is you talking!" <laughs> like just screaming at him for no reason, and then ended up throwing a fucking napkin holder at him from like across the place. Yeah. And then he sat down and was like, "Why do you want to work here?" Like, he, like, like giving like the serious interview. Like, I don't know. I want to make money. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah it was great. Um, anybody wants to work, really? Yeah, like right. I, I hate those questions in interviews. Like, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> where do you? I have bills to pay. Yeah. That's why I want to work here. Where do you? So see interview yourself, basically. If you yeah. had a license, you're hired. Like that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get interviewed when you had to become a chef for the first time? Like at your first restaurant, they interview or? Oh, absolutely. They make you, you cook get, shit. You go, you, yeah, you don't get. It's not really well. It is like a sit down interview, but you do what's called trailing, mm -hmm. and that's basically when you go in and you. Just like work for free for half a day. Oh, so you, you could just, prove like, that yeah. you could put up oh, with it. Yeah, not just prove you could put up with it, but just you know prove that you have a basic skill set right. in the kitchen. Yeah. Like you could tell right away if someone knows how to work in a yeah. professional kitchen or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Correct. first few times it was you know not very good. Cover for a little bit, then put you <laughs> at a station. Yeah, you you get you know you get stuck with somebody. They give you some stuff to do, and you go up for service, help yep. them out on the station. They give you some tasting. Look over the menu. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we had a uh, some uh, Owen's cousin actually, who used to play poker with us. Wasn't he a head chef? Wasn't he? Didn't he work at the Carlton? Oh, Chris. Yeah, yeah. He worked. Um, I forgot where exactly he worked. He worked in a hotel. Yeah, but I remember he was like miserable. He hated it. Well, yeah. He um, <laughs> yeah. He didn't have the best social skills. Right. Yeah. Which. No. Like you have to have in the kitchen, which mm -hmm. it's it's amazing that I lasted so long in the kitchen. <laughs> Seems like a very but, stressful job. Oh, it's incredibly stressful. Like I don't think it I does do seem it. very incredibly stressful, bro. stressful. I just watch Kitchen Nightmares and I'm like, good lord, mm. I'm so glad I don't own or run a restaurant. That's one of my favorite shows, Marvin. And I know it's dramatized it's for the show, one. but yeah, yeah, it's all. It's but all when staged. they're doing like service <laughs> and there's like a rush, like it's probably pretty fucking stressful. I, I have, I happen to know. <laughs> That all those shows are staged because I I'm sure they for, are. I worked for chefs who competed on Iron Chef America. If yeah. You watch that? Mm, yeah. And I just got like the whole rundown. Like it's all planned ahead. Who you're gonna face? What you're gonna cook? Mm. What ingredients you need? It's all uh, just. Yeah. You heard it here first, okay. folks. Shit's Damn, fake. It's all fake. Yeah, Life it's is fake. Staged. Nothing's real. Trust nobody. All staged Can't for TV. It. Didn't you try? Didn't you uh, sign up for be, to be on Kitchen on a? Uh, well, hang on. Didn't you sign up to be on that show or top one of those shows? No, I was. Uh, I Don't was almost on Chopped. Chopped, right? Oh, Chopped is big. Yeah, <laughs> Great when show. I was one of my culinary instructors is like, well, he wasn't my specifically my instructor, but he worked at the school I went to, and he's like a grand champion of Chopped. He won Ooh. like one of the biggest tournaments. Mm. And then one of my actual instructors that I worked with, she was on there. Okay. And they were like, oh, we're looking for people. And I was like, oh, what the hell? I'll do it. And they did a phone interview. And I was supposed to go on, but it was like a, not a regular episode of Chopped that day. It was something like amateur cooks. And because I worked in a professional kitchen, I wasn't considered uh, amateur. So they were like, all right, we'll call you later. Mm, and then they never called me, which is good. Because if I would have went on that show. Oh, yeah. He would not oh, be God. sitting here today. He'd be I dead. Would've, oh, man. I would have passed out, like fell on a knife and just like died or something. <laughs> Yeah, I would have, I would have died from the pressure and being there. Just forget about it. You should have seen this dude the day of his wedding. I showed up to the oh, church God. and I was yeah, like, "Yo, was... what's up, man? How you doing?" And he was like pale white and like didn't even realize I was there. And he was just like, "I had a fear of and just standing like walked up there away. and passing out. Like I had just just fear of it." And then it was in my head. I thought, "That's yeah. it. Don't lock your knees." Yep. But but that show is legit, and I'll tell you right now, it is incredibly difficult. Cut we used to on slow days at uh, Robert Nero restaurant I worked at. We we would do that, and the shoe chef would take a couple of us and give us ingredients, and like, all right, you have 15 minutes, make something, and it's like make something incredible. It's incredibly of, difficult. Yeah, out of so I can imagine the TV cameras there. Forget about it. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's insane. Yeah. So glad you're liking Sunny Marvin. Um, oh yeah. Back to that. I I. So what I was gonna say was I have had people who I've recommended it to been like I just don't see what's funny. They're just a bunch of pieces of shit. I'm like yeah, that's the humor of it is that they're the only people that think they're not crazy, but everyone <laughs> around them, including the viewer, understands that they're not normal people. Yeah. That's like the fun of it. So that's cool. I'm glad you've been liking that. I actually yep. Dusty, 
you're going to be happy. And I w- was going to recommend this to you, Nick, but I forgot. On Dusty's recommendation, I finally got around to watching uh, Shrinking. And mm. I binged the whole 10 episodes, first season, in one night. One sitting. How many, how many times did you cry? Oh, mad times. It was a great show. <laughs> I didn't realize, dickhead, you didn't tell me this. I would have watched it sooner. Uh, it was written, well, created by the guy who made Scrubs and like many other mm. famous sitcoms yeah. on TV. Um, mm-hmm. What the fuck's his name? I can't think of it off the top of my head. Uh, I mean, it was, of course, written by Jason Siegel, so it's, you know, yes. uh, funny off the bat. But Bill Lawrence, who created Scrubs and like a host of other like super popular shows that have been on TV, but also Brett Goldstein was a creator too, and he plays uh, Roy Kent on um, uh, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso, yeah. Yeah. That's the name I couldn't think of last week. What anyway. a great show. It it kind of was like, yeah, Nick, you should watch it. I think you'll like it. It was kind of like, yeah, um, it reminded me, and I don't know if it's because of Jason Siegel's acting and writing, but it felt like a, a bit more of like a, a a more serious forgetting Sarah Marshall in a way. Oh, shit. And that's that one good. of my favorite movies ever, so. It was yeah, great. I love that movie. I, I really enjoyed it. You'd like it too, Marvin. And it's super easy to watch. Half hour episodes, 10 episodes, bam, done. Nice. And I hope they bring That's it back. hilarious. It was really good. Yeah, <laughs> it was very, very good. I liked it a lot. Uh, so I watched that, and um, I watched a movie last night that I mentioned to you, Marvin. Uh, I don't know where I heard about it, but I saw this the other night. I, I Somebody recommended, I think it was on TikTok, I get like recommended some like oh movies that you haven't seen but should have and it's like uh, it was this horror movie called i see you with uh oh yeah uh helen hunt is in it i heard that was good yeah no don't watch it it was Mm. bad i told Mm. you to watch speak no evil did you watch that it was bad yeah you said it was good no i didn't watch it yet i said i heard it was oh but i watched it last (laughs) night because i was bored no i didn't watch speak no evil yet but i will you should have watched that that was good very Um, messed up but uh, good it's okay. I like messed up movies. Oh, no, I did really? watch Speak yeah. No Evil. I did watch that. When? No, wait. Never mind. I didn't. I'm sorry. I thought it was something else. No, I want to watch that. Yeah. That's the one that I had on my list. Speak it's No Evil, I mentioned list. to Dusty a couple weeks ago, actually. So, yeah, it was on my radar. I'm surprised you watched it still, but... Um, Why are you surprised that I watched a movie? I don't know, because you're weird <laughs> about movies. You don't... How am I weird? I, I watched the movie. You have a specific... You have a very particular palette for movies. No, I don't. Did you end up watching... Everything, everywhere, all at once. After I mentioned it last weekend, not yet, but not because I don't want to watch it. Because okay. I just... <laughs> no, that's fair. Don't get defensive. It's a great, it's, it's uh-huh. a great movie. Yeah, but no, it I is. I watched this. I see you, and it's like there's like I don't know. It's supposed to be like this murder mystery, and there's like a twist in it. It's just it was very predictable and not good. It was okay. It was all right, but then it be- it became it became the twist like ruined the movie. Because I was more interested. So right, I'm just going to say because nobody here is going to watch it. But it's about Helen Hunt. She's like a therapist. And her, she, her husband's a detective. And they're having marital issues because she cheated on him. And like he's investigating the disappearance of this boy who you see disappear. Like you see what happens to him. He's riding home through the woods. And he gets fucking tossed off of his bike as if some sort of mysterious force like pushes him off the bike. It's not a mysterious force. They find that there was like a tripwire set up on this bike path. Oh, but while he's investigating this case, like weird shit is happening in their house. And the movie leads you to believe it's ghosts. Or a ghost. But then all of a sudden the movie flips and you find out it's not ghosts. It's these kids that are frogging. P-H-R-O-G-G-I-N-G, which is a phrase that means basically squatting in a house that people actually live in. And you're supposed to like live in their house, but like under the radar. Oh, like, uh, what was that Korean movie? Parasite. <laughs> yes, exactly like Parasite. But, yeah. so, all of a sudden, the movie becomes about one thing when the first, like, half hour, 45 minutes of it was about another thing. And I, I was more interested in the actual mystery of what happened to the kid than, <laughs> the, than the frogging thing. Yeah. And then once they reveal the twist, there's like another twist that ties it all together that I was just like, oh, fuck this. I hated it. <laughs> so, yeah. You can't was... be taking 
recommendations nah. from TikTok. Unless it's our TikTok. You, unless it's our TikTok. You gotta be. Unless it's our TikTok. Yeah. That's true. Can you just do me a favor and or watch Nick's. A Star Is Born now? Yeah, like, Sky. Please just watch A Star Is Born. Yeah, we'll have to cover it on the channel because this guy's been harassing me to watch A Star Is Born for like, <laughs> it's, 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 it's like a great movie. Year. I'm it sure is. it is. I've heard it's great. Oh, that's the Lady Gaga one. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, enough. Just watch it. <laughs> what have you been watching, Dusty? Anything new? Uh, no, not a whole lot. What have I been watching? Just the regular old shows that have been coming out. Uh, I watched a movie called Walk Away Joe, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan and David Strathern. It's more of a low budget. Like he's a uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan plays like a washed up pool guy. His son looks up to him, but he kind of, he's a piece of shit. And mm. uh, David Strathern kind of, you know, lends him a hand, leads him down the right path kind of deal i don't know it's a it's an interesting movie it's a pool movie so i thought I'd is it, it better out. than color of shot. money no yeah, way absolutely not is it better no. than is it better than Close. the sequel cool. uh no no what's the sequel called again i can't remember i oh, don't know color of money is the sequel wait hang on no no no, no there's no sequel to color yeah there is money. it's the one with tom cruise no, Color of Money is Tom Cruise. Yeah, The Color of Money is the sequel new, to man. the original one. What's the original one oh, called? No, it's just a remake. I'm pretty no, sure. No, Hustler, no, Color no. Of Hustler Money. there you go. Yo, no, no, no. Paul Newman's character. Well, the Hustle. No, no, no. The Hustler yeah. is when Fast Eddie goes up against Minnesota Fats for their like marathon pool game. And then right. The Color of Money serves as a sequel where Fast Eddie, Paul Newman, is training Tom Cruise. Right. Yeah. So this movie that you've watched is not better than either of them. <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay. The Hustlers are Jeffrey Dean Morgan is a great these. actor, but he's not Paul Newman in those movies. That's fair. Or who uh, who played Minnesota Fats? Uh, what's his name? The guy from Jackie Gleason. Jackie Gleason. Thank you. Yeah. Hustlers a Whoa. great movie. We're gonna have to get Marvin to watch like a black and white movie at some point. I gotta get. I <sighs> might be Casablanca. I think that might have to be the one. But no, I didn't watch a whole lot. I went to a concert this week. And, oh, that's right. Um, how was that? My, uh, it was good. Uh, Turnpike Troubadours and Old Crow Medicine Show. Oh, I know them. I like uh, them. And in Tulsa, yeah, it was it was great. My voice is still a little hoarse. Just <laughs> drank they a lot have... of beers and screamed. <laughs> Old Crow Medicine <laughs> Show. They're like responsible for one of the most fucking popular songs on the planet, and it's not even mm -hmm. because of their version of it. <laughs> it's because it's uh, the wagon wheel song. Yes. Uh, but I think that song was popularized by. Uh, what's his name from Hootie and the Blowfish? Like his version. Of it. Um, Darius I Rucker. Mean, Darius Rucker. Yeah. You, you could say that, but anybody who loves old music would say that's. No, I like them. Okay. I, I mean, I I like them <laughs> quite a bit, and I also like Hootie, so it works. Yeah. Oh boy. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it for catching up. What about the news, Dusty? Any new? Any big news this week or what? Uh, yeah, actually, we got quite a bit of news. We did um, get, real quick, we know that the trailer for... Yeah, that's in the news. Oh, okay. So I'll let you get to it. Go ahead. <laughs> you should let me... Do your thing. Do your there thing. Tell again. the news. And if, the I news. Miss, if I miss something, you can chime in. Real quick, before we get into the news, I just want to say, uh, have you guys seen the trailer for that show that's coming out with, what's her name from uh, Scarlet Witch? Um... What's her name? What? You're forgetting a lot of names. Olsen? Yeah, Elizabeth. A lot. <laughs> Elizabeth Olsen. A lot Olsen. of sundowning happening. Right I know. Now. I'm sorry. Elizabeth Olsen, she's in a show that's coming out, and I just saw the promo for it, and it looks good. It, it's called, um, where is Love it? Love and Death. Love and Death. Thank you very much, Marvin. What would I do without yeah. you? It's a mini series. I'm a quick Googler. <laughs> Six episodes. What can I say? HBO Max. Looking real good. <laughs> Google Foo is strong. It's about like a murder in like a small, a small town of churchgoers. I'm into that sort of stuff. You know that. It does have really good reviews so far. Speaking of churchgoers, you guys going to be celebrating the birth, well, the rebirth of our Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. Yeah? What are you cooking? Mm, yeah. I am smoking a whole brisket. Ooh. Nice. And I'm braising a leg of lamb. Okay. Might You're not to... smoking it like that one Republican guy that put ketchup on it? And that got uh, roasted on Twitter. Absolutely. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, I didn't see absolutely that. Absolutely not. You put mustard on it and not catch it. I hope I can find that. Are you having it at your house? No, my mom's house. Ah, oh, goddammit. I was going to swing I'm, by. I'm cooking it here. Ooh. You come to my mom's house? 
Yeah, I know, but it's far away. It's not far. I don't know. We'll see. You ever uh, sous vide a brisket before you smoke it? Like cook it Ooh. 30, 40 under temp and then smoke it for only three or four hours and it's no. done? No, 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 no. Then you won't get the smokiness. No, you still get the... I mean, the smoke ring only penetrates so far. But... That is true. That's You're talking I, to I a chef, like six, Dusty. Seven hours. I don't know if you know that Nick is a chef. But yes, Dusty's... but bar- bar- barbecue, barbecue is a completely different animal. You could have all the training in the oh, world that work at the fair. best Michelin star French restaurants, but... You step into barbecue, you're in a whole different world. You guys have that to. Is, there's yeah. a place down the road here where the line is like, um, it's like 40 people until they close or run out of food every day, and they're only open on Friday and Saturday. Is barbecue big in Oklahoma? Absolutely. I would imagine so, right? I know it is mm-hmm. where you're from, right, Marvin? <laughs> yeah, barbecue. Well, that's yeah. Southern cooking. Yeah. You're from North Carolina, a- right? Yeah, North Carolina. Okay. I'm going to post a picture of that brisket. Ooh. By the way, he put ketchup on it. It looks like ketchup. Not sure. <laughs> well, you put you put mustard on meat as a binder for your seasoning, so mm. I guess that's why. You... Okay, but yeah, I mean, smoking. You, I mean, with I guess with pellet smokers now, it's fairly easy. But before, you know, you smoke a whole brisket for 12, 16 hours, low and slow. That's a lot of work. But if you just sous vide it. 80% of the way and then smoke for three or four hours. It's, you still get a little smoke ring, a little char. It's pretty good. Less work. I've been trying to get Nick to fry me a turkey for like the last 10 years. But <laughs> I he will refuses. never, <laughs> ever fry a turkey. I ever. know. It's I, like, deep, I deep fried a prime rib one time. It's like oh. setting off an atom bomb if you do it wrong. <laughs> it's on YouTube, actually. Oh, wait. Did you blow it there. up? No. Oh, have you ever seen those like catastrophes where people just like toss it in and fucking? Yeah. Well, wait, I mean, if there's water or yeah. if it's still flat, it's like yeah, well, yeah, for some people, f- fry turkey's frozen. still frozen. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, you're just gonna boil it over and explode no. it. Yeah, you're an idiot. The, the whole point of frying the turkey is to save time, but if you just spatchcock the turkey, which is removing the backbone, it's it takes just as much time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so, big facts, folks. You write that down from the mouth of a chef. Taking notes. It's all in the brain. All right. Well, let's get into the news, Dusty. You said there's a lot. What do you got right. for us? Okay. Uh, well, we got the uh, a lot of trailers this week. Uh, we got the Secret Invasion trailer That's coming right. out June 21st, 2023. Uh, we we saw uh, a couple characters in there, Talos, Rhodey, Maria Hill, mm-hmm. Everett Ross, uh, a couple newcomers, Special Agent Sonia Fallsworth, played by Olivia Coleman, and Talos's daughter, Gia, I think, played yeah. by Amelia Clark. Uh, one person we did not see in the trailer was Chloe Bennett. She's one from uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. who teased she may be playing uh, Quake in okay. the show, right. Crossing Over. So uh, Fans may be a little bit upset about not seeing her, but that's not to say she won't be in it. Uh, trailer looks good. Did you guys watch it? I did, yeah. Yep. Nick, did you? Great. I can't wait. I did not. Uh, yeah. It looks good. I said before yeah, we started I recording. It came out yesterday. Yeah, it's looking kind of like... Uh, spy thrillery sort of like in the same vein as uh winter soldier yeah which as we Darker, all know prettier feel probably the best marvel movie to date that's, that is one of the best that's up for that's an opinion all right, right there. That is got, up for debate. what's your favorite marvel movie nick let's hear it is it iron man the first no, one my favorite marvel movie is infinity war no you gotta no we exclude those here on harsh language we exclude those <laughs> yeah because they're like we, they're just like next level <laughs> you have, it's how could you exclude it because they're they're event movies we they of course they're by default so if that's the, the number one if if they're the number one and the number two what would be the number three i guess would be the character. sure i'll go with civil war okay civil war is fair yeah yeah i think yeah. see uh yeah but secret invasion looks good uh interesting though in the trailer, they make it a point to be like, where are the Avengers? And Nick Fury's like, I gotta do this myself, or whatever the fuck he says. Uh, looks good. I think it's probably gonna be setting up the Armor Wars show, because Rhodey is now, like, a politician, and clearly yep. in control of Tony's tech, because that's, like, the the, the premise of Armor Wars. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just got to mention the recent Ant Man movie because you know I <laughs> yeah. obviously saw the video about it because and we saw it together. It was really just we did it, see it together. Dumb. It is <laughs> the best part of that night was like the candy we got from Walgreens. <laughs> that was nice. some good candy. Yeah. Smuggled, oh yeah. Oh funny. yeah. Nick's wife accompanies us. Wait, did too. you guys buy candy at the theater? No, it's no, not me. We it's, smuggled it's it my in. wife. Oh, okay. It's not. It's, it's not, not Dan. How you go to the movies, Marvin. 
no my wife does it yeah and we we, it. we we take nick's wife along specifically because she has a purse so she smuggles in, yeah. yeah she smuggles Great in candy idea. and bottles of water also anything yep. you want really you can throw an axe in there fucking whatever yep. you want <laughs> stop oh. at an a.m p.m or a 7-eleven yeah Quick oh trip. yeah Load nick's, up and then nick's go to the a movies. candy guy i'm more of a popcorn guy and then i yeah, grub I off of the other the people on Nick's candy well, he i like nachos I like yeah. nachos though. Nachos. So it's like oh, no. sometimes I do actually buy them. Now, nah, theater food. nachos are never good though. That's never. the thing. They, it's salty and it's cheesy. I mean, hey, no, it's that's nachos. fair. That's fair. You ever pull a uh, a, <clears throat> a Step Brothers Marvin and throw a bunch of cheese on Doritos and microwave it or no? I've done it once <laughs> nah. to try it. It wasn't too bad. I'll be honest. <laughs> I've I've done it one time. I put the nacho cheese in the bag like at Seven Eleven. The Seven Eleven nachos. I haven't had them in years, but they were good. I was a big Seven yeah. Eleven nacho guy and Seven Eleven chili dog guy. Oh, mm. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, Nick, talk about elitists. You can't talk to this Ooh, guy yeah. about fucking buying food anywhere because he'll just Here be like, we go. <laughs> "Nick, you the tell fuck? him about what I like to do with pizza sometimes." Then I haven't, and this is gonna, <laughs> oof, this is gonna be rough. Nick, Marvin puts ketchup and ranch on his pizza. He's I don't like the, fucking ranch. Don't don't put ranch, that on me. Ranch is fine. No, ketchup? He, no, ranch is not fine unless it's specifically Domino's or Papa John's. We know no, ranch is ranch is okay. I got a buffalo slice here. I put ranch on it. it was a fantastic. buffalo slice. You wouldn't go to fucking a pizzeria in New York, uh, get a, a regular slice of pizza and dip it in ranch. You psycho. No, I wouldn't. Absolutely. I wouldn't dip it in ketchup either. Honestly, if I was in New York. Did you have fair. pizza when you were here? Yeah, I told you. I had it from a couple of different places. And did you like it? It was good, right? Like it, it was great. It yeah. lived up to the hype, right? Mm -hmm. And you yep. did not have the desire to put ketchup on it. Nope. Yeah. Okay. I didn't have a bagel. I didn't have a bagel. Ooh, uh, you uh, fucked up. Big mistake there. I don't even like bagels, but I can tell you, New York bagels are the shit. Bagel. Damn. Fuck. I didn't know. That's Dad all right. Didn't tell me about that. No, no. It's okay. It's all right. That it's was. All right. Uh, he was too busy standing me up to uh, <laughs> tell me about the bagels. I was sick, yeah. bro. No, no surprise. He's always sick. Marvin. Yeah, I have a weird immune system. Sick. What do you want from me, Marvin? Also, I just. Uh, Toss you under the bus here a little bit. Oh God! What? I turned Marvin on to uh, oh, uh, God. halal guys because Marvin lives in Vegas and you he's said got. You turned everyone on to halal guys. Did I not turn you on to halal guys, Marvin? You didn't turn me on. Shut he, up. He, he did turn me on to halal guys. Thank you. But I will agree that Dan is a known credit taker. For, I take all, all the time. Everyone do. in the world knows about <laughs> halal guys because of Dan. No, I took you and Kev there. You dick. You hadn't had you it didn't until. Didn't take us there. For my bachelor party, we stopped there. <laughs> because I, I it. wanted it, and you had never had it. <laughs> all right. So, oh, like, what would I owe my life? We no, I'm guys. just saying, <laughs> I turned Marvin on to it because Marvin lives in Vegas. He has access to all the same shit, basically, that we have access to. And yep. he doesn't put the white sauce on his halal guys. And that's. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Sorry, Dusty. <laughs> what else you got for us? All right. It's going to be a long one. Oh, yeah. A lot of controversies coming out. Remember my Super Bowl party uh, I made Halal guys? It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, uh, Deadpool 3. Uh we got a little bit of news on How comes the mud. Uh, hey. Yeah. Apparently, uh, I guess it was Lizzie and Wendy Molyneux. They penned the original script for the MCU. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that was changed. Um uh what was it Paul Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese? did the first two movies and so marvel brought them in to do the third and apparently they've tapped zeb wells to come in and i guess do a rewrite for them um oh, i don't like he rewrites was in, he, he did an episode of she hulk and he wrote some stuff for the marvels which isn't out yet but he's a comic writer and he's been attached to amazing spider-man and the new mutants and stuff so he's he's a comic guy so I expect they just want like a different perspective, you know, movie scripts go through editions where they finally get to one they like, or they just keep going with rewrites. Well, it seems like just minor adjustments, probably from a comic book perspective. Yeah. It seems like they might've, you know, you said they got the original writers, right? From the first two films. Yes. Yeah. The duo that did the first two films that are doing the third and uh, yeah. yeah, they, yeah. they might've had this guy come in for rewrites to just like MCU it up a little bit. Probably, hmm. yeah. If anything. So that's still scheduled for November 8th next year. Nothing new really about it. It sh should start production pretty soon. November 8th next year, 2024. Correct. Yeah. Oh, got to stay alive. Deadpool. That's a long way. Yeah. Long ways away. Uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, I guess, on YouTube, uh, Disney 
released a video where he announced that he is producing a live action Moana remake. Really? Um, I like to shit on Disney live action remakes, but this one, I'll let it slide because the rock is like, yeah, you know, it's, it's about my people, you know, I love it. This is the culture. Thanks for Disney for letting me tell the story. So I'll give a live action remake of Moana, maybe a chance, but I think, yeah, I, I think this one could actually work. Yeah. yeah, yeah it'll be interesting that. to see. He's like, you know, the, the music and everything, the dancing, he's, it's all part of the culture. And didn't he do the voice uh, of what Maui? Yes, he yes. was. Yeah. He was the voice of the character and the animated one. So he's producing the live action. one. So Nick's, we'll see. I don't know if he's going to act in it, but we'll see. I'm a, I'm a Moana expert. Nick's oldest daughter <laughs> is a big Moana fan. <laughs> she snapped. Going to have a live action. So you got that to look for. Well, she was yeah. a couple of years ago. Not so much. Now, yeah. But, when she was right. younger, she used to sit on my lap and look at the phone. And it was just like the I'm Moana song Moana. just on loop. <laughs> I still never seen the it's, movie. I just know that I just know the music from it because of that. It's a good movie. I'm, yeah, watch I'm sure it, it is. Yeah. I should watch it. I haven't seen it either, actually. It's about Coupe, Marvin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my boy. Yep. Um, at GalaxyCon, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio teased a spoiler. Mask is a joke. Uh, he was sitting on a panel talking, and he posited, uh, I said this since I started the Netflix show. Eventually, I'm going to kick Spider-Man's ass. So we are going to get to see a fight, and apparently Spider-Man's going to go down. Um, current rumors have him running for mayor, I guess, in the universe. So we're going to see him. I imagine I for first in the Echo series, yeah. but um, as he's running for mayor, uh, that storyline is from the I think the Dead the Dark Rain is what it's called. Yeah, the Dark Rain storyline, and it's going to run several uh, instances. It's not just going to. Well, he created an end in one movie, so it'll it's yeah. gonna affect everybody. Daredevil, Punisher, Spider Man, Clint Barton, Kate Bishop, like this. You, you and I watched um, Hawkeye together, yeah. And, and I even think we speculated that because I mean they, they, he didn't reveal much about what his what his plot was, but you and I had said to each other like it's probably gonna make sense that he's gonna try to like fill the power vacuum from the blip like we're still living in like the post blip world right where Mm. like he would step up and be like sort of like a trump figure like oh if politics have failed you like i'm i won't like you know elect me as mayor type of thing and we also know from spider-man that like he they've brought him now back to being that like friendly neighborhood spider-man like dealing with like local shit it'll be really cool that they're all together now because now we we get we we have like a world where like we can get a spider-man daredevil team up against kingpin and shit like that all these characters in new york that's why i say like you know despite the quality of recent output from them like there there is plenty of opportunity to turn it around speaking of which i had linked you guys that video the other day of that guy kind of breaking down like what the issue is with marvel lately did you guys have happen to take a look at that nope um no All right, you guys watch never you never watch anything i sent you it's cool <laughs> you said I it was basically watch- a lot of the same stuff we yeah, said already exactly, so i was yeah. like i don't i don't All need right, an fine. echo chamber let me give you this tldr it is a lot of the stuff that we've said but he makes a good point that i had never realized and he basically says the russo brothers ruin the mcu because it was because of how good uh winter soldier is and they've tried to like emulate that ever since <laughs> in terms of like because you've seen winter soldier marvin i don't remember yeah you yep, know how yep, it had yep, like yep. a more muted like color palette and shit mm-hmm. even cap shield in the beginning is like muted tones you, know, you can't really tell right. it's red white and blue yeah and it's like a gritty spy thriller with just fucking captain america in it and he he was just making the point that like they they followed that tone through the rest of their movies with like muted color palettes and stuff like that with the exception of like guardians and a couple of others but you know he was like if you look at the fucking comic books like they're just exploding with color and like all this shit yeah. and you had like jack kirby who like drew like a lot of the older comics and and basically called it said the movies just became like pretty cookie cutter at this point and that's the stuff that we've said you know so they have a chance, Marvin, mm. to fix it up. And Dude. fuck you, Nick, for not liking Captain America. Speaking of, <laughs> Chris Evans did an interview with Variety oh, uh, yeah? on Captain America. Ooh. 
And he said, I think there's more Steve Rogers stories to tell. <laughs> sure. Yay. But at the same time, I'm very, very precious with it. And he also said it doesn't quite feel right right now. So maybe he'll don the shield in tights again. Maybe he won't. But he says if he does, it's going to be interesting. Be special. Interesting that that is coming off the back of last week's news where you said that they are going forward with a nomad show. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. We're, yes. we're going to get more Steve Rogers, baby. Oh, I will. And I can weep. Tears of fucking joy. <laughs> um, Thunderbolt script is actually uh, also getting an update. Uh, Lee Sung Jin has been brought on for a rewrite for that one. Uh, his credits include Silicon Valley, Dave, and his Netflix original Beef. Uh, director Jake Schreier and Steve Yun uh, were also part of Beef, and they are also part of Thunderbolts. So this is like guys getting back together who made uh, some stuff. Are gonna uh, they brought him on to have a look at the script that they have to see what kind of adjustments he can make, see if he can make it better. So. That's what's going on with the Thunderbolts. That one should come out July 26th next year, so next summer. Hmm. Um, okay. I think Eric Pearson wrote the previous draft of the script, so I didn't hear that. A lot of rewrites going on. A lot of rewrites. Yeah, it's, it's just just I mean, another draft thing, of the script. Yeah, they 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 can mix them, mishmash them or whatever, but it's just give us a draft. If there's anything you can come up with that we didn't think of is better, we'll use it. Um. More script writing. Uh, Avatar 2's Josh Friedman has signed on to pen the screenplay for director Matt Shackman's Fantastic Four movie. Ooh. So we have a screenwriter for that. Um, his uh, credits include War of the Worlds for Spielberg. He did the Terminator show for Fox. Snowpiercer for TNT. And he also did Isaac Asimov's Foundation show for Apple TV, which is on my to-watch list, but I haven't got around to it yet. I think the first season is out and done. I just haven't got around for it. Um, I yeah, the seen Fantastic Snow Four Pierce movie. The show. I've seen the movie. Yeah, the show is actually supposed to be pretty good, too. That's another one that I haven't seen. I did see the Terminator show on Fox. It was okay. I didn't know there was uh, a Terminator show, not going to lie. Yeah, it was yeah, called Sarah the... Sarah Connor's Fate. <laughs> it was called the Sarah Connor Chronicles, and I never yeah, watched it because was, of the title. Yeah. <laughs> Awful fucking title. And he, he also did the Terminator Dark Fate, I think he did. Yeah, right talk about a fucked fight, up so. franchise. Like enough, okay? With Terminator, <laughs> no, they're gonna keep making them. Yeah, but they're not like good. They're gonna keep making movies based on the Rocky universe. Yeah, well, at least Creed is good. Or Have you wasn't seen the Creed three like not I good? I didn't see the first. The first, yeah. the first one was good. The first one was good. Yeah. People liked the second one. The third one I have heard was good. I don't know. Oh, you saw it? Was I heard it, good? it was not good. Really? Mm. Interesting. No. It's 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 very unoriginal. So it's basically, uh, I mean, it's basically Rocky Three, but it's also, I don't know, it's it's just a, uh, it's unoriginal. Okay, it makes some, mash some stuff together. It's not very good. Mm. That's fair. Haven't seen it. I don't really well, have a desire. Honestly, it was directed by what's the name too. The acting is all right, but the story itself, like the plot, it's just, eh. yeah. The guy that plays, yeah, Creed, he directed it. Yep, Michael it's B. Jordan. He it's directed his it, right? directorial yeah. debut. Mm-hmm. So maybe that has something to do with it. Well, who knows? I heard I watched Kevin Smith talk about it with Mark Bernard and, and they were saying how like basically what Dusty just said. Not that it's not on original; it just doesn't have the same feeling as the first one. It, did. It's, I mean, it's a boxing movie you've seen before. There's nothing great about it. There's nothing too terrible about it either. It's just well, it's a good meh. story though. Really, is like the first one. It because Adonis is like you know, this fucking kid who's, like, living in the shadow of his father, who was, like, one of the... In in this universe, like, one of the greatest boxers ever, or whatever. Uh, And, like, I don't know, there's a lot of potential with that, but... I heard, though, What's-His-Name was good in it, again. So, too bad he got arrested and might lose his career. Speaking of, yeah, Jonathan Majors. um, Film insider Jeff Snyder made a comment about his looming legal troubles on a podcast. I think he said, you can do a lot in the film industry, but if you're convicted of beating a woman, you got to go. So yeah, uh, That's if, this, if this I trouble mean, is real, then he's in, he's in trouble. You're not going to see him in the MCU or anything else anymore. However, 
I've looked into this a little more. I try to not to dig too deep in it because it's personal shit, but it seems like right. Um, he's got magazine dreams coming up too. Actually, uh, that's his next movie. Yep. Uh, premiered at oh, the sure. Sundance Festival. Acquired about it's, it's coming out December eighth, I think. But um, it seems like a, a girlfriend. They had they had a domestic. Uh, she's saying it wasn't his fault the whole time. His lawyers released some text proving that she said this that she's sorry that she's going to try and clear the air and she didn't want to prosecute. They only arrested him because it's procedural or whatever. So right. I don't know. Well, uh, again, this is personal shit. We don't really need to dig yeah. into it. So, but is, you know, is, Jonathan is Major Miller is still, still looms. If Ezra Miller is still acting <laughs> and walking around in Hollywood, I think true. Johnny B is yeah. fine. That dude started a cult. Mm -hmm. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. listen, if he actually did beat the shit out of her, I mean, like, you know, Probably, oh, yeah. probably he actually did. should He's... go to jail or yeah. something. But that sucks because well, he's she like had a lot minor, of money. Minor bruising, minor bruising and stuff on her head, I guess. I don't know. But... Yeah. There's a lot of money tied up in Ezra Miller and Johnny B. So, yeah, that's the weird they thing. Some, they got some power to cover some shit up if they did the, the things that they were accused of. Well, that was weird with Ezra Miller. Like, he, he, all this news kept coming out, and then all of a sudden it was just like, oh, yeah, like he's. We're not getting hey, rid of Hey, there's a trailer for The Flash, and it looks sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Michael Keaton's back, baby. <laughs> I don't know. Weird shit. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, pretty much it for Disney. Uh, WB, we got some more Game of Thrones, Marvin. Ooh, Nick's Ooh, a big go. Game of Thrones fan. Nah. We got more Game <laughs> of Thrones. HBO is developing a spinoff series <clears throat> with Aegon the Conqueror as the protagonist. Ooh, uh with the help of his dragon, what is it, Blair, Blarion, he he become the first king of all the kingdoms, you know, ruled all seven kingdoms. He actually made the Iron Throne. Um, they're actually talking about maybe making a feature film and then dumping it into a series because hmm. I think uh, Zaslav is actually getting ready to announce their new streaming platform and package probably in the next week or two is what I'm reading. So uh, that might be one of the cornerstones, obviously, Game of Thrones. <laughs> Um, so Nick, you don't like Game of Thrones, is what you? Oh, saying. I love, I love Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. Like I mm. loved it, and they just completely <laughs> ruined everything with that last <laughs> season. It was absolutely yeah. horrid. Like that's yep. it. Yep. It was terrible. That's how you ruin a TV show for fans. Yeah. For it just sure, felt just season. like rushed and like that's it. Can it was I, terrible. Can I well, say that's something? because they were ahead of George. No, you can't um, say most, anything, Dan. Yeah, you never you watched it. it. So what not do you about have to say? not about Game of Thrones. <laughs> it's another link that you and Marvin have, talking oh. about me taking credit for things. <laughs> Marvin recently watched The Sopranos for the first time. Oh yes, and I Nick, recently rewatched yeah. The Sopranos. And yes. for years, it's a good rewatch. For years, Marvin, Nick has argued with me that the ending of The Sopranos was terrible. And I argued that Ooh. it was great because I, I, was it, a, it's, I was a young man when I first saw it. A I argued man. that it was ambiguous and you're not, it doesn't matter what his fate is, really. Well, and it then, doesn't matter what his fate is. It doesn't. Upon Nick's does. rewatch, he said to me, he admitted to me humbly, he bowed at my feet and said, I have to apologize <laughs> because you were right about The Sopranos. I now, as an older man, appreciate the ambiguous ending. It, it wasn't worded nice. like that, but okay. Big win. <laughs> it was a big win for me. Big win. Yeah, big win. Marvin, what do you think about the ending of The Sopranos? You liked it, right? I thought, yeah, I thought it was a good ending. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know if it matters what happens, but... I think a lot of fans of the show were mad at I that, think, just like cut to black, where you don't really know what happens to him. Yeah. Well, it didn't matter. He was done. He was either dead or going to prison. Right, for, that's going what to I mean. Prison. Like, yeah, that's it. So there, it was, there was matter, no yeah. out. But then there's like the looming thing, you know, he's looking at people in the fucking restaurant and as they walk in, it's like, is this Everybody's guy? out to get him. Well, yeah. that's the thing. It's like, you live that life, you're going to live the remainder of your life looking over your shoulder, whether it be for the law or somebody getting vengeance or it doesn't really matter what actually happens just because that's the ending. Like he fucked his life up forever because of his choices. Yeah. What about the members only jacket? <laughs> that's right. He's <laughs> the guy that killed himself. Yes. Yeah. I don't remember. I got to rewatch that show too. It's been a while. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. I, it is. I could watch, I could just rewatch Sopranos and The Wire over and over again. I have not seen The Wire and I'm going, I, oh I'm, I'm my, going God. my goodness. That's got to, yeah. That is crazy. It's better than yeah. The Sopranos. 
Uh, no, no. No, it is. Mm-hmm. It actually might be. It Ooh. might be better than Breaking it Bad. M- it, yeah, it might be one of the greatest television series. I don't know if it's better than Breaking I mean, Bad, is... actually. I don't think it is. I think Breaking Bad... I really think Breaking Bad's the best show ever made. I can't... I what just... are you talking about? You said that Better Call Saul was better than Breaking Bad. I think Better Call Saul is, like, slightly better than Breaking Bad, only in the sense that you could tell that it was a more refined show based off of their experience with Breaking Bad. That's fair. But I still think Breaking Bad's, like, an overall better, better show. But, yeah. I think uh was it last week you you brought up Clayface Dan we were talking about something I don't uh, think or so. maybe it was off topic I don't know um well um there were some rumors that uh well Mike Flanagan uh, revealed on some podcast actually that he pitched this idea for a standalone Clayface movie to Warner Brothers producer Clayface back. the Batman villain Yes okay hmm. yeah um and I I guess a deadline somehow took that and reported that he's back in talks active talks to do that hmm. and other insiders have suggested that maybe it's going to be the villain of batman 2 the twilight guys batman i mean um he, ooh, the uh, batman the batman yeah you gotta yeah. distinguish that he, uh they're probably gonna do the joker i mean let's be honest they they wouldn't have teased him in the first one yeah you know, mike true. Yeah, he he went on Twitter and basically said, uh, the news today is entirely speculative. When or if something like that ever becomes reality, I'll let you know. So Mike Flanagan kind of shot all that stuff down. Mike Flanagan would do some like off the cuff, like weird rogues gallery or a clay face. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. I'm so sick of Batman stuff, really, no. honestly. No, oh, I mean, you just you hated the movie. That's why. No, I didn't hate it. I you I did not like. I'm the movie. looking forward you to the it. animated show. That yeah, of course. We, anybody who grew up in that era would be. I mean, it's one of the greatest representations of Batman ever. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, Batman and Robin, right? The animated series. They're reviving oh. it from our childhood. What are you about Batman Marvin? and Robin, the the best Batman movie. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Stop it. Yeah, it is your best. <laughs> no, they like. No, I didn't particularly care for the movie. You're right about that. But also, I don't particularly care for, like, the constant need to, like, (laughs) just do the Joker. I've said this a thousand times. Like, Mm. Batman has the best villains in all of comic books. And it's not just the Joker. We saw the Riddler has a lot of potential. Harvey Dent has a ton of potential. The Penguin has a ton of potential. Like, there's so many fucking villains that you... Mr. Freeze would be such an incredible story in, like, a gritty, realistic... Batman movie because his story is like had Mr. Freeze. Yeah, but that was like a cartoon, Marvin. Come on, stop with that <laughs> bullshit. Uh, I Mr. don't know why you keep shitting on Batman and Robin because they're terrible. It. Nobody great. loves it. Nobody loves it. It's fucking George Clooney and Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> what are you talking about? Mr. Freeze has terrible. like a heartbreaking fucking story. He's like a villain that you could actually be like, oh wow, I get where he's coming from. Like all he wants to do is save his wife. Nah, ba- Batman just like won't, nice. Batman just won't let him cook. You have so many <laughs> fucking cool villains, and it's just like it's just always gonna be the Joker again. Like it's uh, it's whatever. Anyway, that's because Batman's a fascist. Yeah, sure is. That's <laughs> at least what that's at least what you hear. He's one percent at the end of the Blue Beetle trailer, which actually came out today. Oh, I didn't Did you see watch that. That one? No, oh, yeah, I didn't. It's out. I have to watch. Yeah, it. there's a there's a joke in there, and a dude's calling Batman a fascist. It was pretty funny. Okay. Did you guys Did you guys um, watch like Teen Titans at all? Or is that uh No, not really. Mm-mm. I know I'm younger than everyone, but um Yeah. I I thought that Teen Titans was, was a really good show and I felt that Slade was a super interesting villain in that show. I don't know how important he is in if or if he's important at all. Now he's a big Batman to, villain. He cause he he's a, yeah, he, he's like one of the few villains that matches Batman in terms of like hand to hand combat. If not bests him. He's basically like Taskmaster from Marvel. Mm. Taskmaster is a character that like basically can adopt any hero's like skill set just by watching them. Yeah. And Slade is just like a combat expert. And that's what Batman, like, you know, the joke Batman has no superpowers. Well, no, what makes Batman special is a, his, he's, he, well, he's a brilliant tactician, is what it is. Like, there's no problem that Batman can't solve. Yeah. So, yeah, Greatest no, he's cool. Of all time. Yeah, yeah. And he was supposed to be the villain of Z- Zack Snyder's Batman thing in Bennett oh, really? in Bennett because he was in 
Batman v Superman, right? At the end in the stinger, he was meeting with Oh Yeah, I think that was he was meeting with Lex Luthor. So in Ben Affleck's Batman movie that never was, he was supposed to be the villain. Huh. Mm. Um we're talking about Deathstroke, by the way, for those of you that don't know. Oh, that is that his official name? Sorry. That's that's his villain name, yeah, Deathstroke. He's basically like the DC's fucking Deadpool as kind of type of thing. Oh, got it. But yeah. Well, another cornerstone of the streaming platform that they're going to rely on heavily, apparently, mm -hmm. is Harry Potter. Oh. It's oh, time yeah. for a reboot, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? Is it official? Because you talked about this, I think, last seven, time. Seven, seven seasons, one for every book. Jesus they are Christ. Rebooting, they are rebooting no. it, and they're doing all seven books. This is a remake. I... <clears throat> this is how they're going to get people to sign on to watch their stuff. They're going to make... Who's you know, doing this? A... HBO? Yeah, it's going to be WB. I mean, it's going to be The Max, I think, is what it's going to be called. The but... Max. It's the fucking d d uh, diner from Saved the by the Max. Bell. <laughs> yeah. Instead of HBO Max, it's just going to be called Max or The Max. Yeah. I think that's uh, what the reports are saying. So, yeah, each, uh, each season Harry will cover... Yeah. Who's playing They'll Harry? They'll be announcing any details, right? streaming strategy soon, though. Um, I don't know how Marvin, I feel about someone seen... else playing Harry, dude. I don't know. How yeah, that's going to be weird, too, because, I mean, it's going to be, you're talking like seven years. So if you pick a kid that's like, oh, a fucking 12, kid. Another you know, kid he's going to be act. 19 by the seventh book. I don't know. I'm going to be honest, not to shit on your childhood, Marvin, but I recently watched the Harry Potter yeah. movies for the first time. And I just did not don't even really enjoy them that mm. much. Like they were okay. I was told that the books are ten times better by uh, Vera. Mm -hmm. So I've never read the books. <laughs> the books are better, apparently. The books JK are better. is apparently going to be involved with the show. She's not going to be the showrunner, but she'll be heavily involved to make sure that they <laughs> keep true to the source material. So it's probably executive producer position, I would imagine. Mm, so she's right. still going strong, I guess. Uh, uh, extreme left wokeism isn't really a thing. She has, uh, she has not been Hogwarts canceled. Hogwarts Legacy sold great numbers. So, I know. Yeah. It didn't really work out for him. I told you guys I did see the show, though, Cursed Child, with my friend Tori. She's a big Harry Potter fan. She's the one that made me watch the movies. That was actually pretty enjoyable. I, I kind of enjoyed that. It's like a Broadway Cursed show. Child? Yeah, it's a Broadway oh, show. Oh, right. It's, it's about Harry Potter as, like, an adult, and, like, his kid goes to the school and then becomes friends with Draco's kid. So that was kind of nice. That, that was interesting. I enjoyed that. Hmm. The movies okay. weren't bad. I think I just missed like the mark on yeah, them. Yeah, it's like it's like going back and reading like in a, a fucking young adult book as a as an adult. It's not going to be the same. Yeah, I think. yeah, no. And I but I could see like if you read them as a kid and then seeing the movies, like oh my god, this is crazy. Same similar to, like Lord of the Ring nerds, like you, you know, you see the movies and you, you know blows you away. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Marvin, have you ever seen Heat? Oh, Al Pacino, Val Kilmer, Robert De Niro. That's got to go on the no. list. There's a sequel book. That's, is that what you're about to talk about? That, the, the book is out. Michael Mann put it out. It is a bestseller. And Warner Brothers is now in negotiations to develop Heat 2 with Michael Mann, Ooh. who just released the best selling book. Yeah, he's helming. Huh. Uh, Adam Driver reportedly is going to be starring as uh, a young Neil McCauley who uh, I guess that was Robert De Niro's character. Yep. Uh, apparently the book takes place in two time timelines. It takes place in the 80s when they're, like, doing heist all over the place, and uh, the cop is gets onto their trail some other way, and then it takes place, like, right after okay. the heist. So, like, the movie, the original one is the heist itself, really, basically everything around the heist, and then That's gotta the, be book a, is everything ev the book is everything before and after, so we'll get to see... We'll that, get to see that, so I don't know if it's going to be a show or a movie, but Michael Mann is is show running it. So. That's got to be a make Marvin watch for sure. That's like one of the best yeah, movies that, ever made. Yeah. Marvin uh, Heat. Damn, that good. It's three hours, though, Marvin. I don't know if you can handle it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It Nick. was. And Marvin does not like long run times. It was one hey, of the I'll best depictions, and probably still it. is, of gunplay in Hollywood cinema ever. Like, wow. they, they yeah. used it in the military. It's like, this is the shit they did in this film is tactically correct. This is how we're going to retreat. You know, yeah, this, yeah. Is what, oh, this is what we're shit. teaching Marines. Yeah, that's what makes the I movie guess. good. 
No, nah, Marvin, yeah. the heat is basically it, Dark it Knight without Batman. Oh, wow. Like, Dark Knight was heavily inspired by heat. Wow. Damn, heat, okay. Heat's amazing. It's, so, yeah, uh, we got to heat, too. Heat. <laughs> Dude, that's the whole well, reason for the that's podcast. That's why we have this show. Hey, they yeah. ask me that every time I haven't seen a movie. How have you never seen it? It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> How have you never seen Heat? He's never seen Forrest Gump. He's never seen a lot oh, of that's things. That's not true. It's that's crazy. not true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, that's it for Warner Brothers and Disney. On to everything else. Uh, I'm going to use video the bathroom. Games. You guys keep going. I'm listening. Okay. All right. Legendary has secured the film and TV rights to the uh, legendary Capcom video game Street Fighter. Ooh, nice. Yes. I don't know Love how I feel about that. We had the 1999, ni- or sorry, 1994 film with Jean Claude Van Damme as that uh, was Colonel actually Guile. fucking good. I love that, that movie. I actually that saw that movie in the had, theaters. Yeah, the movie wow. had some success. Uh, not as good as the what, the Kristen Kruk when she played Chun Li in the 2009 movie, which. Uh, made twelve million dollars on a fifty million dollar budget. It yeah. bombed in dramatic fashion. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Street Fighter. Love the characters. Love the game. I haven't played it in forever, but I think the sixth one is out now. Yeah. But yeah, Legendary has secured the rights. So I don't know if they're gonna do a film or a show or both. But we'll see. Oh, maybe they'll do uh, a show. Yeah, show would be interesting. Yeah. They got enough characters for a show, for sure. I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we got an Extraction 2 trailer. Did you watch the first Extraction? It was a Chris Hemsworth Is that with movie the, on Yeah, Netflix. I did see it. Love yeah. that movie. Okay. Very good. That's a good movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, They just dropped the trailer for <laughs> Extraction 2. That's June 16th on Netflix, so that's coming out this summer. Got that to look forward to. The trailer is pretty wild. Like, he's in, like, a, looks like a literal in the middle of a riot in a square, and he's trying to help this girl, so... Oh, More chaos. More I didn't chaos watch there. that trailer yet. He's gonna it. miraculously live again at the end, most likely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he that's... got fucked up at the end of Extraction and just walked it off. Well, he jumped. He jumped well, in the water, right? Yeah, and yeah. Lived. There's some dialogue about how he survived. There's like a, you know, I bet a narration about about <laughs> it a little bit. It gives you a little bit of information. Still not as ridiculous as what's his name? It, what eight was his name in that movie we watched with fucking Ryan Gosling? Se- Seven, six, six oh, was his five. name. It yeah. was six. It was something. It, w- yeah. it was a number between one and ten. He got stabbed up and just he, walked off. Yeah, dude, just got fucking diced up. But <laughs> real quick, while I was I was listening to you talk about the Street Fighter thing, the recent Mortal Kombat movie was not bad. I don't know if you guys have watched that or not. Yeah, it was pretty it. good. Pretty good. It was decent. Yeah. And I just want to say, Marvin, talking about talking shit about me in video games, Nick and I. <laughs> Spent a lot of nights, a lot of late nights playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Marvin, come see me in that shit. I'll oh, put you right in your place. That's, that's a legend a right one. there. Is, I uh, mean, what was your team? What was your? Who did you like to use? Me? I Well, first of all, we used to lose to our friend Kevin constantly. Cause Kevin, yeah, he was, he was good. He played the game constantly on his own and got really good with Magneto, who was hard oh, to be good shit. with. Yeah. I was like a Spider-Man, Iron Man, and like... Akuma guy? He all Kev also really Ooh. liked Akuma. Yeah. Okay. If I remember correctly, Akuma was squishy. But he was Akuma's like Akuma's usually squishy in games because he's super strong, yeah. But he's the one you bring in and like deal a bunch of damage and then right. send him back out again. Yeah. Is Nightcrawler in that game or am I thinking of a different game? Nightcrawler's in that game. Yeah. I, I think, think he so. is, yeah. I'm almost positive. Okay. I that was, game uh, was so fucking good. So good. I went with Gambit, yeah. Iron Man, and Sentinel. The music in that Gambit. game was also Extremely good. I want to take you for a ride. Yep. Our friend George, my friend George, well, Nick's kind of friend George, regular George, he once purchased. Regular George. Yeah, we have tall George and regular George. <laughs> um, regular George once bought on eBay a copy of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 for PlayStation 2 because it's a very rare, very I guess, rare. game. He bought it on eBay. I think it was like 150 bucks, and all he got was like Damn. the case with no disc in it. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, messed up. It was like way back in the day. To see it. Yeah. yeah, Kev absolutely. still has it. He has the original copy. Can somebody look possession. it up right now, uh, Jamie? Can you look that up? Uh, <laughs> I saw it for like two twenty. How much is that worth right now? I gotta know. At least a couple hundred. Looking. Yeah, Marvin, you get on that. Who knows? What else you got, Dusty? While he does that, 
Uh, Paramount Media Network CEO Chris McCarthy has confirmed that they are going to do a Yellowstone spinoff starring Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Uh, that is the extent of the news from Yellowstone. Uh, you know, we already, we already talked about the reports and what Costner's lawyers retorted about. Oh, it's ridiculous. We, he loves his show. Um, they had a summer spin-off. release date. For the second half of this season, but it's in limbo because production has been halted for the whole time for because they haven't said why. But we, we do know, know that the McConaughey, the Matthew McConaughey spinoff is official and it's happening. And it could happen with alongside Yellowstone or without it. So if Kevin comes back and they do finish the show or keep it going, then we could work alongside it. But I think that's I, the Yellowstone news. I actually have a feeling that show's going to die. Because of uh, yeah. John Dutton? Yeah, because, I mean, well, okay, so, I mean, I know we've talked about it before because we've been covering it, but, like, I know <clears throat> Sheridan has said, like, he envisions the show going on for, like, eight or nine seasons or whatever. That's a stupid idea. Especially for a show like Yellowstone. Uh, that I'm is, pretty sure seven yeah, is his max, but yeah. Yeah, we all agree. Five is like, that's the perfect Gotta number. stop. Yeah. Yep. So, but like, uh, he's this guy, like, uh, you know, usually where there's smoke, there's fire. There's been a lot of stories about him being weird. They're doing the spinoff because of his behavior, as far as I'm aware. Yep. And now that they're just like, yeah, no, we're going to go ahead with the spinoff. It, it seems to tell me that, that the, the fate of the actual show is in question. Yeah, I mean they could Seems do. Like it is. They could do Yellowstone without John Dutton, but I mean, he is. you know, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it's all about the money. So we'll see. I did find the. Uh, they have one as low as one seventy for Marvel vs. Capcom two. That's pretty Probably good. Probably a scam. Maybe. Probably. Oh, There's a brand you. new one going for seventeen hundred dollars. Brand new, unopened. I mean. If you're doing it for a collector value, sure. If not, I mean, there's ROMs out there. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly. I just Allegedly. wish they would re-release or for, you know, in like the PS store and you could just right. download it. But there's yeah. some rights issue that they can. I think it's between oh, us. I think it's between Marvel and Capcom, coincidentally. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Uh, Probably. Damn. Uh, speaking of Marvel Comics former editor in chief and ex uh, Marvel Entertainment chief creative officer Joe Caseta mm. has signed an exclusive first look comic book movie and television deal with Amazon Studios. Mm. He will focus on adapting existing and new comic book IP for Amazon Studios. Um, this seems like a hire for the studio itself. You know, they have The Boys and they have Invincible. And those are two shows that are really successful to them. So they're going to try and expand on it. And bringing him in is going to help with them developing their, uh, what, the the Marvel Silk and the Spider-Man Noir series that they got the oh, rights yeah. from Sony to do. So this looks like a pretty good hire from Amazon to build their comic storyline. Instead of making generic superhero stuff, they're going to go to the source. Nice. So, yeah. I'm super excited for that Spider-Man Noir. That looks yeah, really good. Too. It, it did look kind of cool. And I mean, Spider Man Noir is popular in the comics. They kind of did it. It's like one of those like Elseworlds things, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, could be cool. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much it, except for two more trailers. We got some trailers coming out. I think tomorrow's reported the Spider Man Across the Spider Verse trailer should drop tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you guys are into that. And then the Barbie trailer is also <laughs> coming out. That's. Uh, mm. Ryan Gosling and Margot uh, Robbie. My girl. Yeah. Man. Yeah. The uh, the perfect pair. Mm. Well. <laughs> they both are pretty hot. Yeah. That's that's all the news we have this week. A lot more Warner news this week. I was glad to see that. All right. Thank you for the news, Dusty. Sip it up. Mm-hmm. Sip it up. What are you drinking in that of that thing? Mango juice and water. Okay. Mango juice. It's a freshly yeah. squeezed mango juice. Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So let's get into uh, this week's review and the reason why we had Nick on as a guest, because why would we have him otherwise? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so we're talking about The Menu. Came out last year. Uh, this is 
starring um, Ralph Fiennes, Anya Taylor-Joy, Nicholas Holt, Hong Chow, who we recently just saw in The Whale. She was great yep. in this movie. Janet McTeer, who was in uh, another show that failed miserably to end well, um, Ozark. She was the guy. She was the Ooh, one who yes, worked for the lawyer. The lawyer. Yep. We got John. Lawyer. Yep. Yep. We got John Leguizamo. Um, bunch of other people, but also Judith Light, who was in Who's the Boss. I was surprised oh, yeah. to see her in this. Oh yeah. You a big Who's the Boss fan, Nick? Absolutely. <laughs> I saw Marvin. So, have you seen Who's the Boss? It was, not. It was a show back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Such a great show. 1984 to 92. Yep. I missed Tony that. Danza, baby. Yeah. Tony Danza, Tony Danza. Yep. Right. So, uh, this movie came out last year, um, and it was directed by Mark Milod, Milod, I don't know how you pronounce his name, and he's, he's done a bunch of television stuff. We talked about Game of Thrones. He directed six episodes of that show. He's done a bunch of Succession, Shameless, uh, so mm. kind of a TV guy. Um, not his directorial debut. He has done a movie back from like 2004. It's called The Big White with Robin Williams, which is a good movie. It's like a little indie kind of movie uh, from back in the day. But uh, so the menu here, this movie is basically Gordon Ramsay having like a really, really bad day. Um, <laughs> and I'll say off the bat, I'm 100% Margo in this movie, minus like being an escort. <laughs> sure? Although for the right Allegedly. price, yeah, for, right, for the right price, I don't know. But um, this is the perfect example of why I said last week, I think it was, that I didn't like Cocaine Bear. Because and what I, this is what I meant when I said that Cocaine Bear was trying too hard to be funny. This, this movie, The Menu, is hilarious and very subtle about the fact that it is at all a comedy. <laughs> and there were a lot of really funny moments in this movie, but it's funny in the sense that I feel like you have to kind of be in on the joke. And it's mainly yep. the joke of like yes. who these people are. Okay. So the plot of the menu is this starts out with this couple and it's Anya Taylor Joy's character, Margo and Nicholas Holt's character, Tyler. And they're taking a, uh, they're going on a boat to be taken to this like remote Island um, for this chef tasting. What do they call these events, Nick? Events? Just chef tasting, right? You go to them all the time <laughs> with your wife. I do not go to them all the time <laughs> with my wife. You like, have you or have you not gone to tastings? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, what are they called? Uh, a chef's tasting, a tasting okay. menu. Okay, so there's no, sp okay, that, there it is. And <laughs> so, uh, I just want to say off the bat, the time. Uh, you, you've gone quite a bit. You usually quite do it for bit. like your, your anniversary. You like to go to them. We went the first year of our anniversary and it was the best mm -hmm. meal I've ever had. So. Okay, all right, well, maybe nice. hopefully you don't end up getting murdered at one of them. So <laughs> this movie is completely different than what I thought it was. I never watched a trailer for it. When it came out, I had like read like one or two things about it. And I assumed, I don't know why I assumed, but I thought it was like a movie about like cannibalism or something. Yeah. Yeah. You said that a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I thought this was. So I was completely taken for a loop. Um, but <laughs> it was basically when the scene when he like puts the gun in his mouth, but we'll get to that. So these, this couple, they're going for a chef's tasting. And as the movie plays out, you realize like, oh, it's a bunch of like just rich assholes who are like really just pompous fucking, I don't even know how to describe them. Basically the reasons why I hate like art and like wine and like all this shit is it's a group <laughs> What's wrong of, with wine. Well, it's a group of those people that like, they say things like, you know, mm, there's, there's a neediness in the plate. Or, or they, like the way critics talk, or the way like yeah, art. Well, kind of... Yeah, the, well, that's the what chef the point himself. Of the movie is. No, well, I yeah, know. the chef himself said it. He said, "Yeah, did he say he's like my craft has reached a level that only you people can afford this bullshit." Yes, yes. Um, but because of the way that these people are, it made for a lot of very funny stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. particularly from Lillian, the food critic, and her little lackey. She was the best. They the were best hilarious. Character. She they goes, were. I make my own bread. It's very rustic. Like, <laughs> just the way these people, like, and I've seen that too. Like, you know, I've been to like art museums when you overhear people talking about shit. And it's, mm, the, the, the depiction of this uh, piece is very elementary. It's like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, nobody talks like that. 
Yeah. Um, but as Nick said, that is the purpose of this movie. This is about our boy, Chef Slowick, played by Ralph Fiennes, mm. who he's a, he's basically Gordon Ramsay. He's a very famous celebrity chef who has completely lost, fell out of love with the art of cooking and his craft, mainly because of these pompous assholes who he explains throughout the movie that they've just basically ruined it for him and other Can't artists. Can't be satiated, yeah. Right. Um, so after a little bit, you realize that uh, he's brought all these people here to uh, essentially <laughs> punish them for their crimes. Uh, but there's a little bit of a, uh, a twist because Anya Taylor-Joy, she's not really supposed to be there. Yep. And that's a bit of a plot twist that we'll talk about a little bit later. But, but yeah, I want to talk about the, like how funny this movie was. Cause did you guys find it funny? I, I, I would imagine Nick did, but did you too? I absolutely loved it. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. yeah it was hilarious for sure. Like it's the little, when the food critic looked at the plate with minus the bread. Oh yeah. And she goes, Oh, this, that's a broken emulsion. And like, yeah. you have no idea like how to emulsify anything. And they just bring up a giant pot. Like, yeah. Some extra yeah. broken emulsion for you. <laughs> but I like that her lackey, like he, he worked for the magazine that she was writing the article for. He was like, he would always disagree with her, but then agree with her after she like said something. And I thought that was really funny because I guess she, yeah. you know, I don't know, critics too. Like really? I never have to deal yeah. with that. They were, when they first were doing the tour, she said something like biome and then he tried to use a different word and she's like, no, no, I like biome mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course <laughs> biome is better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Nick, did you get a lot of food critics in your restaurants when you worked there? Absolutely. And when they came in, we were alerted and everything <laughs> had to stop. Yeah. I and bet. they had to be taken care of, which is bullshit because everyone's it there is. paying to eat. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And you live and die by what this person says about your food in your restaurant. And that's that's be the way it goes. Because it could kill your business. Fucked up. Exactly. Right. And, and nowadays with everyone the, the Yelp reviews and everything, it's it's mm -hmm. like ballooned out. Yeah. Right. And that's really like, you know, the, the point of this movie really is this, it's his reasoning for doing what he's doing. Um, it's just a couple of quotes that I pulled cause they, they really made me laugh. Um, when, uh, I, I, I think it was Lillian who said it, but she said, um, it wasn't about the food. It was when they brought out the tarp at that one point and she goes, yeah. She goes, it's still, it's very theatrical, but quite minimalist. I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> but the person who I thought was the funniest, and I think that's the point of his character, was Nicholas Holt's character, Tyler. Mm -hmm. And Tyler is introduced to us as, like, this basically fanboy of celebrity More chef. More than just a fanboy. Slowick, yeah. A, a know-it-all. He's a know-it-all well. about food. Like, he very is into, like, the craft of food. And throughout the movie, we think that Anya Taylor-Joy is, like, his girlfriend, and he's taking her on this date. We come mm -hmm. to find out later that she's actually a escort, and he hired her to come with him last minute after his girlfriend, who was supposed to go with him, broke up with him. Mm -hmm. And we find out more about him later. But he is, like, this food fanboy know-it-all, and he know What was the machine that he kept talking about through the movie. Oh my God. I forgot. Nick. It's a machine that it makes things into like, like the texture of snow. Like you could turn any ingredient mm. into the texture of snow. What's it like, called? Uh, though? Uh, something jet. It was so jet specific. Or... Yeah. And he just kept bringing it up throughout the movie. So he's like yeah, one he of those. Obsessed. And, and like, he was like, Oh, don't smoke. It's going to ruin your palate. Like all this other shit, which well, that is, that is true. I know it is. So, <laughs> um, he was very funny to me because, Throughout the movie, as like the events start to escalate in like what's happening, yeah. you know, people are getting their fucking fingers chopped off. One of the sous chefs fucking blows his brains out in front of everybody. <laughs> He's like acting like none of it was really he going on. And he was into the food. And it's later you realize he was actually in on it on the plan because Chef Slowick contacted him like weeks prior and let him know, like, yeah, people are going to die tonight. And you can't tell anybody. So that's why he was unaffected by it. Yeah. But it made for comedy. I thought he let him know he was going to die as well. That's how I took it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. He, he knew everybody so was going to die. He went there knowing that he was going to die himself. Yeah. Be that's how obsessed he was. Right. Yeah. That's how obsessed he was with the food. But there's one brief moment. And I don't know if you guys caught this, but when, when they did the bread thing, there's one of the plates here is, uh, I guess, a bread plate without the bread. 
and it's like the dips, really? like, the dips that you would Just dip the, the bread in. Yeah. yeah, and the camera's not even focused on him. It's like panning off on somebody else. But in the background, you hear him like as he's eating, he goes mm, and bomb me in this. <laughs> like <laughs> I was fucking cackling. So. <laughs> You know, it's a very funny movie in that way because you're looking at all these people who are just like, just ridiculous human beings who, quite frankly, yeah, no, it was kind of deserved what they got. If I'm being honest, for sure, no, it was <laughs> hilarious. I thought the chef might have been the funniest. There was one quote he was great. where he's like, he was talking to one of the guests, and she was like, "No, I shouldn't even be here." And he was like, "Where'd you go to college?" She's like, "Oh, I went to Brown." I wrote that. Did down you have too. any student loans? <laughs> No, I'm sorry, you're dying. <laughs> yeah, I wrote that down too. Oh my god, my that favorite, was so the funny. best quote that he said was he's asking the the billionaire couples that have been there like eleven times and he asked them, name one dish that yep. I yep. that you've had here last time. And he yeah. couldn't think of anything and she like whispers to him, like uh, she's like cod. Yeah. And he's like he's like cod and he's like, It was halibut. Like, what does it matter? He's like it it matters to the halibut. <laughs> <laughs> Did it, no, he called yeah. her something. Did he call her he says it's halibut. Donkey. You donkey. Oh, yeah, donkey. donkey. That made me think of the Gordon, Gordon Ramsay donkey. That was yeah. for sure a nod at Gordon Ramsay because he has it called people donkeys halibut, before. Donkey. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, you know, so it's not really a horror movie. The movie's not scary. Um, I'd say it's more it's of a like psychological a thriller, I would say. More, more of like a anything. black comedy thriller type of thing. Um, and, you know, it's not a horror in that. It's not scary. There's no jump scares. It's not really gory there's a little bit of like gore but it it doesn't like linger right. on it to where it like wants to make you feel sick and shit yeah um but that being said it works as a thriller because there are a lot of really tense moments in the movie especially before you kind of realize what's going on it's like a slow burn because anybody who knows what a chef's tasting is like you're brought a series of uh, courses right of little tastings of different dishes but each one that he brings out starts to escalate more and more until <laughs> really the turning point in the movie is when he brings out this like tortilla dish and the tort on the tortilla are like laser printed photographs essentially of <laughs> all the guests deepest darkest secrets the couple that nick just mentioned like there's a picture of the husband cheating and there's with a margo with margo yes yep and there's a group of three douchebags who like work for this company and they are committing tax fraud and embezzlement of the company. And like the tax documents are printed on the thing. Um, yeah. You know, it's fucked up. John Leguizamo's character got the worst luck because the only reason he was there was because he ruined his day off when he went to see <laughs> the movie. Yes. <laughs> it's like, bro, he was in a bad that? movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it was more than that. I think it was because, he was starting a food show and he was doing research for it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he okay. like knows nothing about it and he bites it and the woman he is with goes, Oh, how is it? And he just like goes, It's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh John Leguizamo played um his he's credited as movie star and he plays like this washed up movie star who takes yeah. roles that just pay money and like don't provide anything. And that's where Ralph Fine's character is really like that's where he's coming from, is like I provide a service to people but it's become not that anymore like it took the joy out of it and and like that you know any art form is you're providing us something to somebody and in this right. guy's case you know you're a movie star you're providing entertainment to people but you've become so like mm. you just you've lost the love of the craft that you're just trying to make a check and not right. actually give a fuck about the product that you're putting out and that happens over time mm -hmm. yeah in the industry absolutely yeah yeah I they almost imagine. basically show it to you when margo is in the room when she gets past the silver door you see the pictures of of his career uh, him through his career like he's got the family smiling and then you know he's All right. at the end he's kind of standing there he's not smiling and then she sees the one where as a kid you know you got to start he's flipping burgers <laughs> he has this big old grin on his face because he's just <laughs> loving it yep yep uh so before, so uh, I messaged Nick earlier today and I was like, hey, get ready for tonight. Get your camera and mic ready. And we were just talking back and forth. And he's like, oh, did you watch it yet? I said, no, I usually watch before we record, like after dinner time. So I was, it's like fresh in my head. And he goes, oh, you're going to snap. And I was like, why? Well, because I'm obsessed with burgers 
And like, I'm always <laughs> sending Nick burger videos on like how to make smash burgers. I told you guys I make him make me smash burgers. It's like my favorite thing in the world to eat. And the climax of the movie basically is a burger in a sense. And I actually got a little choked up. And now, you know, guys, you guys know I cry at everything, so it doesn't really matter, but it actually matters <laughs> because this movie does something brilliant that I like. It's a, I thought this movie was great. And it's mainly because the depiction of Ralph Fiennes, the, sh the chef, who is technically the villain of the film, he's not really the villain of the film. And this does uh. something that I mentioned. I talk, to, we, I talk about this all the time with Breaking Bad because it's so brilliant that a writer would put you in the position as a viewer to root for a character and then at some point, imperceptibly, it twists and you're like, oh, wait, Walt's the fucking villain of this show. Mm, well, he's a victim of his own gift, really, is what it is. But this movie does the opposite of Breaking Bad, where he's the villain of the film. And then at some point it flips and you're like, oh, wait, he's the victim. Not that murdering people is ever right or, you know, the, don't do that, folks. But well, they didn't even <laughs> try to leave. Like, that's what I found odd about. Nobody tried to do it's, anything. They didn't they, really they, they just, like, anything. They just yeah. went with it. Like, well, oh, we're going to yeah. die. All right. Well, he even yeah. says it in the movie. He was like, you know, you guys could have tried to leave at any point and you probably would have got away with it too. But yeah. I think it was the fact that they were consumed by their own hubris in a sense that it almost made it so that like, I think they all knew at that point, like why they were there and they probably figured like, ah, well, that's it. We're fucked sort of thing. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know how to describe I it. I just think that was the, uh, they were trying to show the absurdness of the pretentiousness because, mm -hmm. okay. uh, I mean, That's Margo, what I was to say. Was the, Margo was the only character who would, was willing to talk back and say things to the chef. Mm -hmm. This is Tyler, you know, he was like slamming the table, like, what are you fucking child? You don't sit back <laughs> stuff to a chef like this. What the fuck yeah. is yeah. wrong with you? Like, yeah. no, 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 no. That's not how this works. Yeah. Well, you there there comes a point in the movie where you actually feel for him and realize like, oh, he really is the victim because here's this guy who once loved doing this thing who has just been beaten and broken by like the I guess the culture of it, right? Or just our culture yeah. in general. Uh and she becomes the one who breaks through to him and it's because of the burger. She realizes that his happiest moment was flipping burgers at like a fucking greasy spoon diner. Yeah. So by the end of the movie, you know, he had get, he realizes she's not supposed to be there. And, uh, you know, he gives her the option. He's like, everybody's going to die tonight. You can either die with us, the, the, the staff, or you could die with these pieces of shit. <laughs> and she's like, well, I don't really want to die at all, if I'm being honest about it. And uh, but yeah. but he feels for her because he realizes that she's like not a piece of shit. Like he you know, there's a moment where they talk and he's like, oh, you're in the service industry, too. I could I could tell. People are fucking rude and this, that, and they don't value us and all this shit. Um, but she has that breakthrough moment where she's like, as Dusty said, she talks back to him. She's like, you know what? I don't even like your fucking food. Um, there was this like running theme throughout the movie. She wasn't eating any of the dishes. And he was like, why aren't you fucking eating my food? Like, I need to know. And finally, she says, like, I just don't like your fucking food. And I'm still fucking hungry. And he's like, well, what could I make yeah. you that would make you full? And she's like, I just want a burger. And uh, there's that he's plating the burger and he gives that little grin. That's when, uh, well, that's where yeah. I got choked that's what up. Got me. Yeah. I got a little choked I, I, up. I know exactly what you're talking about. You probably <laughs> did more than me because you actually enjoy cooking, but it, this doesn't just, it's not just exclusive to cooking. It's for just any art form really, or anything you do that you enjoy. Like, yeah, you know, I enjoy doing art, but now that I do it for a living, like I don't really care yeah. for it that much. And that's that how feeling you right. when you know you've done a good job and mm -hmm. you also feel good about the work you've done. But it's like he's doing these like elaborate fucking like, you know, tastings. Not just this <laughs> one. This one was with the purpose of exposing and murdering people, but like <laughs> Yeah. You get the sense he's done these in the past because he mentions it, but like you're doing these elaborate, barely fucking food dish things that like you're putting out but really at the end of the day what's better than just making a fucking good burger and the answer That's is true nothing because nothing is better Although than a that good burger. chicken thigh was looking really fucking good i ain't gonna lie that did look i would hate that and the oyster i would have ate too that shit looked good too <laughs> um and the scallops and the scallops I'll, i would have eaten everything i, I like 
I just like fruit, but <laughs> there's just nothing better than a good fucking burger. And he says all the things. It's funny because, you know, I Nick gets mad at me whenever I bring up burgers, but he'll be like, enough of fucking burgers. But like, he <laughs> says all the things that you would say. It's like, American cheese is the best cheese to use on a burger. Yeah. It just when, is. When he when he was cooking that burger on the flat top and just like the cheese melted onto <sighs> the flat top and that little corner of the cheese crusted up. Yep. And Ooh. then it just perfectly got scooped up on the bread. I was like, oh. Yeah. Whew. I, I like I could good. I could like taste that bite from just watching it. I was like, oh boy. And yep. that's why you're gonna be making them this weekend. Oh no, this weekend's Easter. You won't be able to. Yeah, <laughs> Next I'm, weekend. I'm called to make you smash burgers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen. Uh, uh, yeah, you tried making your own, Dan. No, if I made a smash burger uh, in my tell, house, he would, he'd burn his house down. No, I, I would probably be able to do it. I just, I would get kicked out of my house. There's no way the smoke that is produced from those smash burgers would be allowed in my home. Forget about <laughs> it. Yeah, I thought it was so funny how at the end they still put their their cards and money up to pay. It's like they were so entranced in what was happening. Yeah. Well, it's like Dusty said, they were so consumed by their... Uh, what was the word you used? Uh, I, I used a lot of words. It was pretentious? Pretentious, yeah. They were so consumed by that pretension that they had that, like, they were willing to die to be, like, kind yeah. of to be... is how I took and it And anyway. pay and be... Ha- yeah, that's... They, yeah, she was the only one that was willing to say no. Yeah. Like, right. she, send the order back, get a new one. Can I get it to go? Yes, you can. Like, she beat the system... And they all watched her do it, and they all watched her walk away and leave. And they didn't. They just sat there like, "All right, you can, yeah, okay, it, go ahead." And kill it, us. it was we like it. it was like the final yeah. gag of the movie, um, not meant to be taken seriously. Obviously, anybody <laughs> in this situation would try to survive and flee and do right. all that stuff. He, but he could have poisoned the burger. That is a possibility. He could have, Ooh. but I didn't. I didn't get the sense that he did. Like he appreciated her because they were. So he he saw her as an equal, as like a service, a uh, service industry worker equal, but also he at the end appreciated the fact that she talked not only fucking shot him down and like brought him back to earth a little bit, but also she showed that she was the paying customer and yeah that she he was servicing her and not him's you know not the other way around because yeah these other people were acting like. <clears throat> Like the chef is, you know, they're they're serving the chef just by being there when it's not. That's not the case. Yeah, there's also a line in the movie that was delivered by Hong Chow. She plays Elsa, his uh, assistant, and there's a moment when one of the embezzlement guys kind of sparks up and he's like, "Ah, oh, we just want bread. Just give us some fucking bread. Do you know who we are? Like he's flexing his like muscles or whatever. We could have this place shut down in a second. She's like, "Yeah, whatever." But she whispers in his ear. She says, uh, "You'll eat less than you desire and more than you deserve." And mm-hmm. and then there's a moment where Ralph finds he says I didn't take the exact quote but he's talking to them and he's like you people are like fucking parasites you've you've it's because of you that I am this bloated fucking star star chef or whatever like I don't even want to be this like a chef is the happiest when they're just making food for people it's what I tell Nick all the time you should be happy to make me food because it's your job as a chef yeah like you want to just put food in people's mouths and like, and in any, oh, again, that works for any art form as a movie director. Like you want to deliver this experience for people, but it's right. critics, it's fucking scumbag fucking yelpers. And like all these people that like ruin that and turn it into something that it's really not. Um, and that's, I think ultimately why he appreciated Anya Taylor joy, because she brought him down to earth and she showed him that like, Oh wait, I could still enjoy something I enjoyed like 30 years ago, something as simple as like making a burger for somebody. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was good. And, and that little moment got me a little choked up because he was like happy when he had that, you know, he it was, was happy. a good moment. Yeah. He was happy. Um, well, that's why the like original celebrity chef, Marco Pierre white gave back his Michelin stars. Did he? he earned them. Yes, he did. Tell Damn. us about that. Well, he was like Britain's first, you get rated by Michelin stars. Like that's like the highest honor you could get as a chef. So right. if you have three Michelin stars, you're like, that's it. Like that's the top of the top. Mm-hmm. So like, he like strived to get those Michelin stars and he finally got them. And then he was just like, similar to Ralph Fine's character. Yeah. It's just like, you know, why am I like, I don't give a shit about you people. <laughs> right. he, he gave them back and that's it. 
And then he just wow. enjoyed his life with his family. And he continued cooking, but not like at that level yeah. of pressure and maintaining that level of perfection, right. basically. And he gave that's it gangster. back. And that's it. It's a great book, dude. <laughs> that's the Devil in the Kitchen. It's What's like his fantastic name? Fantastic read. Marco Pierre White. Hmm. He's he's the chef who trained Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay oh, worked he, under him. You've told me about wow. him. Wow. Yeah. Didn't he make Gordon Ramsay cry or some shit? He did make Gordon Ramsay cry. Whoa. It's a it's a great book. You should read it. <laughs> Whoa. <Devil in> <laughs> This reminded me of another uh, cooking movie called Chef with John Favreau, which he directed and wrote. And that one's obviously not a thriller or anything like that. That is a, uh, that's about um, a chef who basically loses his livelihood because of a negative review. Like basically falls out of love with the, uh, like the craft and then eventually gets it back by opening up a food truck and like doing that sort of thing. But yeah, it's like, I don't know. I I just I thought they did that really well, and I and I thought like having it be like a dark comedy worked because it's like you don't really need an explanation for a lot of the things that happened in the movie. Like obviously people wouldn't have just sat there and paid and like let them do whatever they wanted at the end there. Um, obviously his staff wouldn't have been on board with like their mass suicide <laughs> or whatever. Right. Uh, yeah. But but because it's a black comedy or just a comedy in general, like it there is an air of like ridiculousness to it that. None yeah. of that stuff actually matters. Right. Um, what did you guys think about the fight scene between Anya Taylor Joy and Hong Chow? Oh, it was pretty good. Yeah, I thought it was good. Now, I, um, she got right. whacked over the head with that jet that Tyler was bullshit about. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I want to know. I took it as like Elsa Hong Chow's character being jealous of Margot and thinking that she was going to actually replace her as Chef's sidekick. Yeah. And that's why she was think, doing that? I think it was that. Like Elsa was yeah, obsessed with her, her her fake like um status, I guess. And yeah, she felt threatened, I think. Yeah. And she also knew like she was gonna die along with them. Well, right? Yeah, she wanted, yeah. <laughs> she was getting the chef's attention where Elsa wanted the chef's yeah, attention. Well, yeah. So. He was like obsessed with right. her. Right. Followed yeah. her to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he saw something. He knew she wasn't supposed to be there. Like again, he meticulously crafted this event with precise plans and she was the kink in the thing. And and that was the big twist of the movie is that, you know, Tyler, Nicholas Holt's character, again, brought her there, um, knew about this whole thing, but what a piece of shit. He wanted to go so bad and knew that people were going to die that he brought her knowing that she was going to die and didn't tell her. That guy. Scumbag. Well, he he uh, threw him on the line and he's like, uh, oh my uh, God, something, please. That was hilarious because I, that like, was so funny. I mean, I know it's just was in called... the movie, but like, I, I, I felt the pressure he was getting because <laughs> that's <laughs> happened to me when they said, like, oh, right. you know, like, sometimes when I oh. said earlier about trailing, they'll be like, oh, you know, make, make, oh, me you're something. a chef? Let's see it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. you're just like, you freeze and you're like, what? And then they're watching <laughs> you cook and you just feel like, you know, yeah. It was so funny. The name of his shit was just Tyler's bullshit. Yeah, Tyler's, Tyler's like bullshit. <laughs> undercooked, undercooked lamb. lamb. <laughs> it was so yeah. fucking trash. And after the human, as good as the final recipe, though. What was the final <laughs> one called again? It was just the, oh well the it was the the uh, yeah it was the, the ingredients because it was s'mores yeah because it was marshmallow chocolate graham crackers customer staff restaurant yeah, yeah. <laughs> ingredients. But uh, yeah. <laughs> after the humiliation of Tyler, he fucking hangs himself for. He well, was I, down bad. Well, the chef that. whispers something chef into told his him ear. To kill himself, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, he had. Yeah, the chef was, had him in the palm of his hand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He would do anything. Like yeah. if he told him to like cut his leg off, he would go grab a cleaver. Yeah. He would just yeah. <laughs> and and that he would one throw it on the grill and cooked it. <laughs> in the one moment in the movie when he was like, "Oh, the men, you guys could." try to take off like he didn't even try to leave he was just like hovering around like trying to see what was going on inside yeah. um yeah. but yeah i thought this movie was great honestly i liked the cast the cast was fucking everybody was pretty pretty great in it like doing their own thing like janet mcteer who we said she played the the critic lillian like she really like played that role well that she's just like a fucking shitty critic who like because critics generally they don't give a fuck about like the damage that they could do to somebody's Either yeah. either their like motivation or just career in general. In fact, <laughs> last week's episode of fucking uh, Ted Lasso kind of dealt with a similar thing. Uh, there was a beef between like a beat writer for the team and one of the former players, where he was like, "Oh, you wrote this fucking scathing article about me when I was eighteen. Like I thought I've been thinking about this ever since." 
So I yeah. feel like, you know, people write shit and they don't necessarily think about what they're saying. Like when you're shitting on a sports player or whatever, movie, director. It's coming from a guy who sent out some pretty wild tweets. Hey, listen, they're, they're for comedy, okay? <laughs> um, I thought Ralph Fiennes was great. I thought he did a really great job of playing that, like, I'm not really a villain, but I am a villain type of thing. Right. Uh, and then everybody in between was just either funny or like, again, just perfectly playing that, the role. The only one person that I was, I was left sort of like, not really sold on this being the way this goes, but, uh, Judith Light's character, Anne, like the wife of the cheating husband. I don't see why Mm. she was like there. She didn't seem like that bad of a person, to be honest. Well, she was, it was like you said, guilty by association. She, plus he had to have someone come with them, so. True, and and they they've been going there for months or true. years or whatever it may oh, be. Oh yeah, so. and, and she, she could care less about the food. It was just that's about true. the status, of right? Going exactly. Yeah. It was about the status. That's fair. She yeah. couldn't she couldn't name a dish either when she asked him. I mean, she yeah, yeah. she cod. said cod. <laughs> when I was god, it's cod, say cod. young and in my twenties and making pretty good money, I, uh, I lived in this poshy town and we'd go to nice restaurants at lunch for work and we'd see all the. The wives group sitting around spending all <laughs> some money at these yeah, fancy yeah. restaurants for going to eat it. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, all in all, I think great movie. Interesting plot. I thought it was done very well. It's funny. It's, there are, it are thrilling moments, but, uh, the details are very good. The way the kitchen was set up, you know, the way the, the line chefs were, I got like some PTSD with those <laughs> surgical plating things because that is like how. Really? Yeah. Star restaurant is it's like you, you gotta be on your shit do you really yes. have to say yes chef absolutely Ugh. absolutely chef. i mean you don't have to stop and like like me in the military and yes, scream, chef. but you yeah no but you <laughs> that have clap to, there's a ranking and if they're above you you know you show respect right it's like the military yeah we always said we chef the French. Oh, yeah, because you work at a French <laughs> restaurant. Yes. Let me tell you something. Nice. This guy brought me home probably the best lobster bisque I've ever had in my life Ooh. when he was working at the restaurant. Yes. You don't know what goes into making that lobster bisque. Oh, I'm sure, it's, I'm sure it's a lot. Um, but yeah, <laughs> anything else you guys want to say about this before we uh, wrap um, up? I was just reading that the original script had Daniel Radcliffe instead of John uh, Leguizamo oh, as really? the movie star. Yeah, uh, that would have been interesting. I could picture him being good because he was a good piece of shit in that uh, rom- rom-com we watched him in. Oh, man, yeah. Where he was the villain. I thought Lost he, City. Yeah, I thought he yeah. was good in that movie. He gets a bad rap, Daniel Radcliffe, as being like not a good actor. But, I mean, Dusty and I both agreed that he fucking killed it in the Weird Al movie. I thought. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, um, yeah. I yeah. thought it was a great movie. I liked the, the the burger parable. Actually, reminded me of Burnt as well a little bit. Was it? Um, yeah. Bradley bit. Cooper's character. He takes his well, sous chef, I guess, to what is it? Burger King, and he's he's. She's like, no, I don't eat this, and he's like, why? Is this is working people's food? It's good because right. it's consistent. You know what we do is a little bit different because this high end chef shit. You know we're doing our we're striving for perfection, but there's nothing wrong with this food. It's good. It's consistent. You know that. Yeah, mm, like and that. Uh, similar yeah, parallels. That's what chefs eat. Like when we're done working <laughs> and making like all this, you know, amazing food. Like we're not going home and stew being a halibut with like you know. <laughs> right, right. We're getting a pizza. We're yeah. getting like fast food. Just you know, yeah. Only Tyler's doing that bad for shit. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Well, I mean, they call it comfort food for a reason, right? Like. Absolutely. Yeah. There's nothing better than a slice of pizza or biting into like a fucking juicy, melty cheeseburger. Like <laughs> it's just there there just isn't. You know, of course these things aren't like the greatest for you to eat, but like, you know, everything in in moderation, moderation. is not That's bad right. for you. Uh but yeah, no, I, I think ultimately for being like a comedy and a thriller and like all that horror or whatever you want to call it, I think it actually had like a pretty nice message to it. Um which again, part of the reason why I got choked up there at the end, because it's just this guy who loves doing a thing and he got just driven to his breaking point to where he does no longer enjoys it, no longer enjoys living because, you know, he kills himself at the end with everybody yeah, else. Yeah. Uh, but he, there was that little moment at the end there, you know, where he briefly enjoyed it once again. But I think by that moment it was too late. Like every, everything had come to, like, it was all, there was no going back at that point. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, no, I loved it. It's got a seven point two on IMDb. I'm I'm 
I'm pretty close to that. I would give it like a 7.5, honestly. Nick, yeah. you, you should be aware, but in case you're not, we base our ratings off of IMDb. I know you do. Okay. <laughs> you love IMDb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he does. This is Lord and Savior. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm Next get, to Lucifer. It's, bar. it's true. I'm giving this 7.5. <laughs> what about you, Marvin? Yeah, I'm right there. 7.5 was good. Let's I think the pacing go. was good. It, it didn't seem like to have a really dull moment to me in no, this movie. It didn't. I wasn't no. checking the clock or anything. So, yeah, really good. Dusty? <laughs> yeah. Every serving told a, t- told a tale, and it was great. Yeah. That's yeah. the way they did it. Brilliant, actually. What's your rating? Yeah. Seven and a half. So okay. I'm, I'm agree with you guys. That's Nick? Good. I'll go 7.5 too. Whoa. Nice. Cross the Ooh. board. 7.5. Unanimous that's big. decision. Yeah, that's that big. big. Never, never seen before, I don't think, Easy. on harsh language. No, I don't think no, so. No. No. I'm glad this wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Uh, I thought, it, like, again, I thought it was going to have to do with like cannibalism. I don't know why I thought that. I just did. Um, I think it was because it came out alongside this other movie called uh, Everything But the Bone, which was a cannibal type of movie. Mm. Um, so maybe that's why I thought that. But. Uh, yeah, and one of the things I just wanted to say, too, is I really liked the cold open that this movie did, which was just, like, establishing how shitty of a character uh, Tyler was. Like, how just fucking pretentious he was about food. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> and how sort of just, like, Anya Taylor-Joy's character was kind of just like, eh, this is not for me. I right. mean, the guy blew his brains out, and Tyler's just, like, sucking down that bone marrow like, <laughs> like nothing so happened. <laughs> Bro, when he said that, he's like, oh, embalm me in this. I fucking was cracking up. That shit was so fucking funny. But uh, but yeah, there you have it, folks. There's our thoughts on the menu. Nick can be found on his YouTube channel, Rose Pig Cooking. We'll link that down below. Um, mm-hmm. Nick, Nick on his channel. Also on TikTok. He, also on TikTok, yeah. Big on TikTok. Big, big on TikTok. Million big. views on a video, right? If I remember yep. correctly. Big. Yeah. yeah, a little more than that. Did you really? More Ooh, than a fucking nice, nice flex. Talk your shit, Nick. <laughs> like 16 million on that one video. Which one was that? That Shoot. was like on the health drink, right? Yes, the pineapple tea. Mm, okay. Oh, shit. I got to check that one out. Yeah, Nick makes a wide range of recipes on his YouTube channel. Lately, he's been doing uh, cool little recipes or like, I guess, what, putting meal together prep meal preps for your daughter's school, Ooh. right? Going to school? Nice. Yes, I- So if you need some help with making a nice, fresh, healthy meal for your children, check out Rose Pig Cooking. Uh, Nick, before we let you go, what's your favorite thing to cook? That's like such a hard question. No, it's not. If you could pick one thing. Uh, If I came over and I said, Nick, cook me something, what would it be? Not based on me, based on uh, what you want to cook and eat. Like, what do you, what do you, what's your favorite thing to cook? I don't know. Answer me. We're not going to end. Uh, Not ending until you say it. Uh, uh, oh <laughs> I re- I really enjoy smoking ribs. I guess. Yeah, you're mm. a big smoking guy. God. I love it. I love I love a good smoked rib. Can't go wrong. I with love smoking. ribs. It's me and Felsco. I think because I've messed it up so many times, and now I've got it down to where it's like really good every time. It's just Ooh. I've like never. That's something I look forward to making. If I, I can make. It. If I can make really good ribs consistently, I would definitely be making. Well, I, I made ribs, really so. bad ribs for like a very long time before. I <laughs> so, so I've never had yeah. your ribs. Smoke me up some ribs. What do you mean you've never ribs had my ribs? Ribs is a tough one because you can you can go on. Well, you can easily go on there, but going over too, like ribs, it's a. Well, if you got baby backs or. Sandals, you got like a big ass smoker, or what do you what do you use? I have I have a pellet smoker. Pellets and smoke. I, Ooh. I want to get one of those Kamado, Kamado Joe. You can uh, smoke grills. food on a Weber grill if you need, if you do oh, it. It's just a yeah. lot more. I, I used to have one of the <laughs> offset uh, smokers. Yeah. Oh. Nick's big in the game over there. I see. Nick, yeah. uh, have you? Because uh, we were talking about meal prep, I mean, thinking, have you uh, tried any of the uh, <clears throat> meal prep services or any of the like delivery services that any of these companies do? That where they sell you fresh vegetables. They s- Send you fresh vegetables and stuff and freeze dried meats and a menu Hello and fresh. You make it yourself. Yeah, Hello Fresh or no. any of those. Any, I, none of that shit. I told I, him I'm he a, should. I'm a I'm make a, it I'm at a, home kind of guy. I don't I'm not against it. It's just you know, I just go to the store and get what I get what I need. <laughs> when the same way. when the three of us did the brief subscription to uh Factor. I did not. I thought you did. 
No. Oh, I, had, I did, and I loved it. I did, too. It was good, but I was hungry 10 minutes later. But I told Nick that he should do it for <laughs> content on his channel. Like, oh, Professional Chef reviews these, like, meal prep services. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that actually uh, be... That's yeah. a banger idea, actually. Yeah. Dan no takes credit for everything. He's going to roast review, some of that shit. Review the, yeah, the quality get of the, the ingredients. Oh, I never had the burger, Marvin. That was could not recommend the burger. That was crazy. I mean, but you do. still have to cook it yourself. So no. they're just sending you. Well, factor you just microwave. It. Factor you just throw yes. it in the microwave. Yeah. Oh, so it's well, just that's a TV dinner stuff. getting mailed to you. Yeah, yeah but it's yes. a, it's a TV dinner. It's packaged like a TV fresh dinner, but it's yeah. fresh. Hello Fresh is actually fresh, the fresh ingredient. Frozen. That's yeah, fresh frozen. Yeah, fresh frozen. On a TV dinner, I'll oh, heat so up my Stouffer's lasagna. Fresh frozen. Fresh frozen. <laughs> All right, we're talking too much about food. I'm fucking starving. We got to get out of here, folks. Nick, thank you for All coming right. on the show. Yes, Again, thank, thank you, Nick. Nick. Check thank him you. out on uh, Rose Pig Cooking on YouTube. Link will be down below. Uh, let us know what you think of the menu if you have watched it. And uh, we'll catch you next week, folks. See ya. Hasta. <laughs>